guy in school that on library day, when I would go to check out library books, I was checking out books on Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, UFOs, and mysteries. I just had a mind that I wanted to know things that nobody else knew. I wanted to know secret things. I wanted, I wanted that. I, I just, you know, God just prepares you for what you're going to do in life. And, and that's how it was with me. And so I, I think just because I've thought this way all my life, I think different than some other people do. And uh, um, it's exciting when I get one of those eureka moments when it all connects. And John was with me yesterday when it, when it just, there it was. And he saw the excitement on me. And that's, that's where I like uh, finding things out in life. So, you know, a, most of what I do is just God, God has just lifted the veil in my mind on certain things. I don't know everything. And uh, I don't know that I want to know everything or, or that I can know everything. But I believe that I hold everything that is known right here. I hold it right here. And if I, if I do anything on anything, any conferences I do or anything like that, I, I want people to go to the Scriptures, go to the Bible, go to the Bible, go to the Bible. I'm going to uncover for you tonight a secret that it is the biggest secret in the world in history. It is the absolute biggest secret in all of history. Uh, wars have been fought over this secret. People have been killed who have either revealed or threatened to reveal this secret. And it is a secret that I found out is, to my knowledge, is not written down anywhere except one place. And I'm going to show you tonight where you can find this secret at. Okay? Um, but I want to start out uh, going to Scripture. Take your Bible. I want you to turn to two places. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and Psalm chapter 2. Deuteronomy 18 and Psalm chapter 2. Now I have a, as I, as I talked to you a while ago, I have a prevailing philosophy in my mind. And that is, the Bible is the absolute, complete record of everything that is. Do you believe that tonight? Say amen. amen. So, if I need help in life, should I really go on the Dr. Phil show? Because if I really, the kind of help, listen, the kind of help I, I need, Dr. Phil cannot help me with. Okay? I mean, I might like his Texas drawl, but Dr. Phil cannot save me from what's really my biggest problem. Nor can he save you. Can I hear you say amen? amen. The greatest questions I've ever had, I've not found help on Oprah, Dr. Laura, Paul Harvey, Rush Limbaugh, or anybody else. The greatest problems and the greatest questions I've ever had, I've always been able to find them in the Scriptures. I tried to get you to across at least one idea last night, that the Bible is the book of life. And it's not just the book of life, it is the book of your life. How, how many of you have ever done this? A prevailing problem in your life, a trial, a tribulation taking place. God, I need help. Show me answers. You took your Bible, opened it, and there it was. Raise your hand. And when you read it, I mean, the doodads just go up and down your back. Amen? Amen? That's because God not only knows where everything is in His Bible, He knows how to make you turn to it. He knows. I believe that. He knows. Listen, I'd rather believe that than to believe somebody said, Oh, God gave me a dream about you. God gave me a prophetic word about you. Let me lay hands on you. Let me tell you what God told me. to. Do. I don't believe that person. They're a liar. Let God be true and every man a liar. So I would just rather believe what's written here rather than trusting anything else in this world. So the Bible is not only the book of life, it is the book of your life. And every question that you can possibly conceive of to question, the answer is right here in this book. It is the book of your life. And so we go to the Bible with that approach. How is it that we understand um, what, not only what happened in the past, how, 
not only what ha is happening right now, how is it that we can understand what's going on with North Korea right now? You've been watching that? Those people scare me. Those people are, they should be, uh, North Korea and Iran should be very scary to us. Okay? How can we know yeah, can, do you think? Do you really think you can trust Tom Brokaw and the NBC Nightly News no. or CNN? No. 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 Somebody's going. No. It's like, how stupid are you? <laughs> you can't. Mm -mm. But I can go here and find answers. Okay. I can go right here and find answers. Not only what happened in the past, not only what's happening now, what's going to happen in the future. There are people in this world who say, oh, let me read your palm. Let me read your palm. Hey, hey, would you like your, hey, would you like your palm read? <laughs> you know that trick, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Missed that one. There are people who say, oh, let me read your palm and I'll tell you your future. Or let me, um, let me gaze at the stars and I'll tell you what's going to happen. I used to read when I was a kid. I used to read my horoscope. Don't act like you didn't. <laughs> Good for you. But I used to read my, I used to come home from school, grab the daily paper in our county and open it up and read the horoscope and I'd go, wow, that happened to me today. What I didn't know was what that was for tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't know that. But all of those things are corruptions of a sure word of what? Prophecy. It'll tell you what is going to happen. I know what's going to happen. Amen? Amen? And even if you only know one prophecy in the Bible, stick with it. That is the prophecy of where you are going to spend eternity. I, ex I believe this Bible. I believe that it is a sure word of prophecy in that I believe that God tells me that I am going to heaven when I die. And I know this to be true because I read it in the sure word of prophecy. So we're going to uncover things that there are, there are two forces in this world. There is a force for evil. There is a force for good. And we're going to talk about the forces of evil tonight. That includes people, politicians, businessmen, preachers, and those who are leading them. They're called devils. Do you believe those things are real? The forces of good are God, Jesus Christ, His Holy Spirit, the holy angels in heaven, and, and the Word of God, and those who follow the Word of God. That's who we're dealing with tonight. Deuteronomy chapter 18, um, verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found any among you, or among you, any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, that, it is, that is an attempt to discern the future without using the Bible. That's divination. Or an observer of times. That also is an attempt to discern the future without the Bible. Or an enchanter, or a witch. A witch is someone who tries to use or have power outside of the power of God. Okay? Or a charmer, or watch this, or a consulter with familiar spirits. What are familiar spirits? They're devils. They are devils. They are devils who, and I don't want to get, I don't want to spend a lot of time dealing with familiar spirits tonight, but do you believe that there are certain politicians who are being led by devils. Do you believe that? Amen. Okay. Do you believe that there are businessmen in this world who are being led by devils? In New York? In Hollyweird? In Nashville? Do you think they're record company executives that are being led by devils? Sure there are. Do you think that there are preachers? Yes. And I have several videos on that, okay? D um, politicians, business leaders. Hey, there might even be business leaders in this county, in this town, that, have con that are consultants with familiar spirits. They're being led. They're being inspired. Do you think music is being written that is being demonically inspired? See how, so when you believe in a conspiracy, it's easy to believe 
that there are devils who have a lot more power than mankind who are doing and coordinating all these things together to achieve a goal. And that goal is to enthrone Lucifer as the God of the universe and to remove God from his, from his position, from his throne. Their conspiracy also is Psalm chapter 2. Turn there. I did a whole teaching on conspiracy theories right from the Bible. The Bible will tell you all the conspiracy theories that are going on. And here's one of them. Here's one aspect of it. Psalm chapter 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. That is a conspiracy. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed. That is against God, His Son Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and you. There is a conspiracy to destroy this church. There is a conspiracy to destroy your family. And you know it. You know it. You know there is. There is a conspiracy to destroy Christianity in general. Okay? And here's what they say. Let us break their bands asunder. What's this, on my, what's this on my finger right here? It is a wedding band. So why are they trying to enforce gay marriage in every state in this country? Because it breaks the bands of the picture of Christ and the church. It breaks that band asunder. That's a conspiracy, isn't it? And I, listen, I read an article today, and I'm going to put it on our... We have, a, we have a weekly broadcast out of our church. It broadcasts over the Internet, the Watchman Broadcast. And I deal with current events. So here Tuesday, the Supreme Court of California upholds the will of the people. Thank God for that. It is we the people. Amen? The, and so the California Supreme Court upheld the will of the people. Nancy Pelosi, congressman, Democratic congressman from California from Sandy, San Francisco, if you can believe that, okay? She comes out and says, what a travesty that the Supreme Court upheld the will of the people. When it was her job, Mom, I'm preaching now, it was her job to, to be a representative of the will of the people. <sighs> That's a conspiracy. And who's... Who's really leading Nancy Pelosi? Isn't it easy to see that familiar spirits and devils let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us? Why? Because you and I are standing in the way. Okay? We're standing in the way. So everybody understands, because I'm going to show you some things tonight, that if you don't believe that the conspiracy is demonic then it won't make sense. You'll say, well, that's, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay? What do I have behind me up here on the screen? What is that? Okay. It's, it's associated with the Freemasons. What does it mean? What does it mean? Does anybody know? Does anybody know what it means? So you drive down the road and you see this square and this compass. By, by the way, you, this lodge number, did you see the number up there? Can you see the number up there on the screen? Am I in somebody's way here? Okay, lodge number 666, this is in Hershey, what, oh now, is that better, okay, was I better off over there, was I okay, okay, all right, I'll stay here, lodge number 666, why the number, why the symbol, and if you ask them, they will not tell you the truth. They are sworn to secrecy. They are sworn by an oath that says that if they reveal it, they will have their throat slit from ear to ear. That's what they do in their lodges. That's what they say. Does that sound Christian to you? There's no way it can sound Christian to us. Okay? So anyway, we're going to talk about secrets tonight. The, the book, the, the book of Freemasonry, and there are several of them. One of them is called Morals and Dogma, and I have a copy of this book. It's about this thick, about 800 some odd pages long. And in the front of this book, and I was going to bring it with me tonight, and I left it at home. In the front of this book of Morals and Dogma, and the copy that I have says, Esoteric Book, 
to be given only to a Scottish Rite Freemason. Esoteric means secret. It means that nobody but a Scottish Rite Freemason has a right to read that book and know what's inside of it. Nobody does. Now, I contrast that with this book here. And I'm telling you that everybody has a right to know what's in this book. Amen? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to only those who are worthy or deserve it. Is that what Jesus said? He said to every living creature. Let everybody know. Jesus said what I, what I whisper in your, ear, in, in your ear, you proclaim from the rooftops. You tell everybody what I told you. Is there anything in your church doctrine or belief system or practice that when you go to knock on somebody's door, you cannot immediately tell them if they ask? Anything. Is there any secret thing that you guys do here that you don't want outsiders to know about? No. 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 That if you are, then you're a cult. And the word occult means secret, hidden. So in this book, Morals and Dogma, which by the way, I read most of this book. Okay? And I was looking for their secret. In 800 some odd pages, he alluded to it, but he never wrote it down and it made me mad. But anyway, Albert Pike, he called it the Grand Arcanum. He said, that secret whose revelation would overturn earth and heaven. Let no one expect us to give them its explanation. He who passes behind the veil that hides this mystery understands that it is in its very nature inexplicable or unexplainable and that it is death to those who win it by surprise as well to him who reveals it. Bring it on. Because I'm going to reveal it tonight. If you don't know it already, I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you every I'm going to tell you the secret that's behind Freemasonry, the New Age movement, the Rosicrucians, movies that you've seen, TV products that you I'm going to tell you the greatest secret that has ever been on the face of the earth. He also said the truth must be kept secret. Now is that what the Bible says? And the masses need a teaching proportioned to their imperfect reason. You know what he's saying? You are the masses because you're not a mason. And you can never, ever, ever, ever know the truth because you're not a mason. So when we tell you something as masons, we're lying. Masonry, like all the religions, all the mysteries, keep that word in mind. There's a woman in the Bible who has that name. All the mysteries, hermeticism, and alchemy conceals its secrets from all except the adepts and sages, or the elect, and uses false explanations and misinterpretations of its symbols to mislead, that means lie, those who deserve only to be misled, to conceal the truth which it calls light from them. Now, what did Jesus tell us to do if we had a candle? Did he tell us to conceal it? Amen? You remember the song? Let it sight shine till Jesus comes. All right? From them and to draw them away from it. Truth is not for those who are unworthy or unable to receive it or would pervert it. He goes on to say, So masonry jealously conceals its secrets and intentionally leads conceited interpreters astray. So basically they're saying that if you, if you, if you heard from a mason what a symbol means, they lied. They were not telling you the truth. Manley Hall, an occult Masonic writer, he wrote a book called The Secret Teachings of All Ages. I read most of this book looking for the secret. He didn't write it down either. He said, the book to which this is the introduction is dedicated to the proposition that concealed within the emblematic figures, allegories, and rituals of the ancients is a secret doctrine concerning the inner mysteries of life, which doctrine has been preserved in toto or in completeness among a small band of initiated minds since the beginning of the world. Departing, these illumined philosophers left their formula that others, too, might attain to understanding. But, lest these secret processes fall into uncultured hands and be perverted, the great arcanum, which means great secret, was always concealed in symbol or allegory. So we go back to that square and compass. That square and compass 
that square and compass reveals the secret that they are concealing. And if you are of the highest order and level of these secret groups, then you know you are what I call the Illuminati. You've heard that word before, right? The movie that's out now by Dan Brown, Angels and Demons, is about a secret order called the Illuminati. They are real. They exist. They are the people who know what the secret is. They support it. And everything they're doing is to try to make sure that the secret takes place here on earth. That's who the Illuminati is. And that's who he's referring to. Now, look at, let's go to the Bible for a minute. I, I added these verses this afternoon. I really felt like the Lord wanted me to. So I want you to pay attention here. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee how? Now, let me ask you a question. You ever, have you ever invited somebody to church? You ever invited somebody to church? Did you go, hey, I want you to come to church next Sunday. <laughs> you never did that? Hey, I'd like to invite you to church, Sunday. Would you like to come? Yes. Okay. And usually say, no. Move on. Okay. But in secret societies, they're, they're, they're trying to entice you how? secretly and he said if they entice thee secretly saying let us go and serve what other gods which thou hast not known thou nor thy fathers namely of the gods of the people which are round about you nigh unto thee or far off from thee from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth thou shalt not consent unto him masons have a logo that says to be one ask one so if you ask a mason to be a mason they will bring you in and if they invite you in say no i can't it's a secret society and god said i can't do that it's written in the law God said I couldn't do it. Mm -mm -mm. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shalt thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him. But thou shalt surely kill him, thine hand shall be the first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And this law is not concerning your next door neighbor, it's your own family members. If you go look at it. For 2 Kings chapter 17, And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. Now do you know do you know what I know about every person sitting in this room tonight is that you do things secretly against the Lord your God. Everybody does. Everybody sitting in this and see you didn't amen that. Because when you, when you either disagree with me, or you're, you're going, I'm not going to talk. I'm not saying a word. I don't know what it is. But you do. None of us who go to church ever make it a point to sin openly. We all have those little secret sins against the Lord our God. And they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchman to the fence city. Job 13.10 He will surely reprove you if you do secretly accept persons. You know, what I, you know what I saw with my own eyes one morning? I was in with somebody I know who was who had to go to court. And this was like an arraignment procedure and all this and that and the other with my own eyes and this is in our county courthouse you've heard of the good old boys network right it's real because all of the lawyers who were in that county they were talking to the judge and this and that and the other they know each other in comes a city boy okay I could tell he was city because his hair was slicked differently than the other boys that was there young lawyer walked in did not know the judge had never been to that county before he walks in with his square and compass lapel pin on his jacket. What that means is, we're going to work out a deal for my client. And that, in the scripture, is called secretly accepting persons. And you're never to do that. God told us to judge according to the book, not according to our affiliations, our families, or our feelings. Amen? 
like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion lurking where? Who's the lion? It's Satan. Where is he, where is he right now? He's waiting for you in a secret place. He's waiting for you in the place, watch this, where your secret sins are. And he'll devour you if he gets the chance. How many of you believe that? Say amen. amen. Now, remember the mystery. There's a woman in the Bible whose name is Mystery. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Proverbs 5, chapter 6 speaks of this strange woman and says, Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Two spirits operate in this world, a spirit of harlots and a spirit of God. One is a holy spirit, one is an unholy spirit. One works in the light, in the open. One is the light. The only light allowed inside the tabernacle, the temple. Remember what the temple is? The only light allowed was the seven candlesticks inside of there. That was the seven spirits of God, the Holy Spirit of God. He is the light. Her spirit always works in darkness and in secret places and in secret symbols and in secret things. you believe that? Say amen. amen. Here is a description of her. Proverbs chapter 7. Behold, Solomon was looking out his window at night. And he said, Beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. You see, men who are sinners, do they love daylight or nighttime? What, what, how, those of you who've ever been in a bar, what's it look like to you? There are no well-lit taverns. Amen? And most sins take place when? Daytime, nighttime. You see how it works. Because our, dark, our sins are evil and they're dark and our deeds are dark and we don't like to be seen doing them. Yet Christianity is lying. Are you getting the contrast here? Okay, I'm just kind of laying a laying the groundwork here. Now, I went to, there is a building in Washington, D.C. It is called the, um, oh, I forgot what it's called. It's the Mother Lodge of America. It's in Washington, D.C. It's about 13 blocks north of the White House. I went into this lodge. They, they, they take you to, on a tour through the, through the lodge, okay? They have a library of about 7,000 volumes in this lodge. And I knew that they had a library in there. And I'm going, man, I bet they only let like high-ranking masons into that library. You know what I found out? I found out that I could walk in there any time that they're open and read any book I wanted to. Do you know why? Because they know that the secret that they possess is not written down in any of them. They know that you will never, ever, ever figure it out from reading those books. And so I did. I read Masonic literature. I read this and I read that. There is one place where their secret is written. And you're looking at it. Here's a Masonic book from 1866 called The Masonic Ladder. Remember what we said about DNA last night? What does DNA look like? Think about it. The Masonic letter written in 1866 said, The Bible is full of Masonic secrets to the initiated. They're saying that the Bible has the secret in it. Here's a book called Freemasonry in the Holy Land. This was written in the 1800s. The author said that the Holy Scriptures are the instruction books of the Lodge. So the secret is in the Bible. Albert Pike said, For the master, the compass of faith is above the square of reason, but both rest upon the holy scriptures and combine to form the blazing star of truth. So even Albert Pike said that the Bible is where the secret is. Here's a book called The Ignorant Learned, written in 1863. This author said the great, the great Masonic truths concealed among the learned of former ages under allegories and fables are therefore lost, long, long lost. But what is lost is not consequently destroyed. What is lost may be found. And all that is required is some clue or what? Key. 
And guess who? See, that's a Bible word, isn't it? The word key. Well, you find the word key in the Bible. And guess who just happens to be holding the key? Jesus Christ does. He holds the keys, doesn't he? Okay? Now, fortunately, there are applicable keys held sacred by a body of men who know not their use. And the locks these keys fit are held sacred by all modern clergy and the multitude of religionists. The first and best evidence of the truthfulness of the keys is their being used to interpret the Bible, that heavenly book of truth. So I went into the Mother Lodge of Freemasonry in Washington, D.C., and if you ever go into a lodge or are familiar with the practices of the lodge, you know that right dead center of the lodge room itself, where the Masons have their meeting, is an altar. And on top of that altar is a King James Bible sitting right on top of there. Now, generally, that, that Bible is open often, and it has a square and, co square and compass sitting on top of it. There are a lot of reasons for that. Some of that I will talk about to tomorrow night. I will tell you why the square and compass is sitting on the Bible. But the truth of it is, is that God said to me, would you like to know the secret? And I said, God, yeah, I've been asking you. And I remember telling Jeremy Howe, some of you know him. I said, Jeremy, I said, I don't know, but I said, but I think God's trying to tell me that the secret that I'm looking for, and I didn't know what it was. The secret I'm looking for is going to be in the Bible. And he said, Brother Mike, I think you're right. And he began to pray for me, and I began to pray. And God said, you want to know where the secret is? And I said, yeah. And God said, we're going to study the Bible, and I'm going to show it to you. And I'm, going to show you I'm going to give you one word out of the Bible, okay? And how we're going to find the secret. Jesus said, what I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. Now that I know the secret, I cannot keep quiet about it. I have to tell people what it is. Now, do you remember last night when we looked at Jacob and Boaz? They were 23 cubits tall, so they represented what? The 23 chromosome pairs that are in our cells. And the chromosomes are where what is stored? Our DNA. The DNA, the book, right? The book, of God, the, the, the book that God wrote is in our tw 23 chromosome pairs, epitomized in the temple as the, as the columns that Solomon built called Jachin and Boaz. So I'm going to show you a Masonic graphic up here. See the two columns and the letters J and B? That does not stand for Jim Beam. <laughs> what does it stand for? Jacob and Boaz. So think about it. Why do Masons use these two columns to conceal their secret? Now that you and I know what the columns are and what they represent, do you think now that we know a little bit about what their secret is? How many of you think you're getting it so far? Their secret has something to do with deoxyribonucleic acid, or the book that God wrote that's in our temple. That's what their secret has to do with. See this? This is called the Parthenon. This is in Athens, I believe, in Greece. This was, in its day, the greatest center of pagan worship in the world. The Parthenon is, is basically a temple where the gods live. Now think about what I just said. What is the temple? This is a temple where the gods live. Are you getting it? See those columns around that Parthenon? You want to take a guess how many of them there are? There's 46 of them. Exactly. This secret has been around for a long time, Mike. It's been around for a long time. Now, we only know scientifically, that the human body in our cells that we had 46 chromosomes, we've only known that for a hundred some odd years. But the devil knew it a long time ago, didn't he? And he, remember, these guys are the ones that are controlling the secret. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. I want you to listen to this verse very carefully. That day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. You believe in that? Say amen. amen. And that man of sin, who is that? It's the Antichrist, that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is, is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth where? In the temple of God. What is the temple of God? The only proper 
interpretation of this verse is the human body. Because God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands, does He? The only way God would ever enter this room is if He walked in with you. Well, it's deep, isn't it? So the man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to reign as God where? Right inside the hearts of human beings in this earth. That is the ultimate form of demon possession. They've taken over mankind. Showing himself that he is God. Remember that. What is that? DNA. Okay? And we've only known, we've only known of this general structure of DNA since the 1950s. Okay? But I'm going to show you something that goes back about 4,000 years. Take a look at it. What does that look like to you? Dennis, what does that look like to you? Looks like DNA, doesn't it? Entwined snakes. Looks just like DNA, doesn't it? Remember, this conspiracy is not just men. It's devils. It's the devil, who Ezekiel said is wiser than Daniel. This goes back to ancient Samaria. Does that look like DNA to you? How about this one? A Peruvian textile from 300 years before Christ. Wow. Secret's been around a long time, hasn't it? You've seen the caduceus? In his, what is that, his right hand? It's DNA. It's been around thousands of years. The devils knew the secret. This showed up on Time Magazine. Solving the mysteries, the mysteries of DNA. And there, depicted on the cover, is Adam and Eve. And what is that behind them? It's a tree. Think about it. Are we getting close? Okay. See that? That is a New Age, Eastern mysticism idea called Kundalini. Kundalini says that at the base of your spine is a coiled serpent. And if you go through the proper in, uh, initiations and rituals, like emptying your mind, channeling familiar spirits, or receiving an, an initiation pat on the forehead from a guru, think about that one then you will receive kundalini the serpent will then begin to crawl up your backbone now remember what we learned last night about the backbone how many bones 33 why do masons use that number think about it it's a number for them for illumination when the serpent winds his way up your spine and enters your forehead you receive enlightenment, and you are one with the universe. You're one with everything. How many of you remember a rock group called Sticks? How many of you know what the name Sticks is? <laughs> a rock group. Who said that? Get out. You're not one with anything. <laughs> okay. The river Styx is the river that flows through hell in Greek mythology. And this, the rock group Styx had a song called The Serpent Rising. And the lyrics are, for, in the abyss of space from the center of time, a superman race. Think about it. Moves the serpent to climb. The secret revealed when you leave your cave is a glory of thunder and life from the grave. The serpent is rising and coiling in your spine, bringing you light from the depths of your mind. Who inspired the song? Familiar spirits. Okay? Now, I was in Michigan. I drove past this billboard. I said, stop! i got to take a picture of this. The Michigan Masons, in trying to recruit people, their slogan was, share the secret. So I'm going to. 
They said I could. So I'm going to tell you what the secret of Freemasonry, the New Age, I call it New Age because it rhymes with sewage, <laughs> the New Age movement, and everything that the devil does not want out, I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay? Down here at the bottom, next to their square and compass, which tells you the secret, says Masons live better. Now, masonry is all about the ascension of mankind. Remember last night when I told you about evolution and that evolution is dangerous? Masonry supports evolution because masonry says that mankind and the New Age movement says that mankind is about ready to enter his next stage of evolution where mankind will be more than human. We will be transhuman. We will be super men. We will be a divine race. We will be as gods. Thank you. So the slogan, live better, you, do you understand that? <laughs> now, if you work at Walmart or go to Walmart, you're not going to hell. Okay? We live in this world, but we are not of this world. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Now, <laughs> masonry is all about rebuilding Solomon's temple. Now remember, the Bible says that the temple is what? The body. So masonry then secretly is about rebuilding the human being. Okay? So, there in the Mother Lodge of Freemasonry in Washington, D.C., they have a slogan on the inside that says, Masonry builds its temples where? They're telling you the secret. Okay? Now, has anybody ever seen this symbol before? This is on the Masonic temple in McAllister, Oklahoma. A pastor took me there and he said, Pastor Mike, you've got to see this stuff. It's a cross with a rose on it. Okay? It is called the Rosicrucian concept or the Rosicrucian doctrine. The Rosicrucians was a secret society that sort of arose in Europe just prior to the time that masonry was really taking root, and masonry adopted Rosicrucian thought into its, into its teachings. So masonry and Rosicrucianism are linked together. Here is what Rosicrucian doctrine says. It says, the manner and the means by which the present day man is what? Transformed into the divine superman. Remember what we just saw that song from Styx? The Superman race, the divine race. This symbol, Christian Rose Cross, shows the end and aim of what? And you thought it was just that we came from monkeys. Evolution is not about where we came from, but where they say we're going. That's why it's dangerous. Human evolution. The solution of the world mystery. Man's past evolution present constitution, and particularly the secret of his future development. What is man going to be turned into? We're going to find out. Pike said, it is for each individual Mason to discover the secret of Masonry by reflection upon its symbols and a wise consideration and analysis of what is said and done in the work. Masonry does not inculcate her truths. She states them once and briefly or hints them, perhaps darkly, or interposes a cloud between them and eyes that would be dazzled by them. Seek and ye shall find knowledge and truth. So that's what we're going to do. Albert Pike associates this great secret with the discovery of the alchemist's philosopher's stone. The Philosopher's Stone is the concept in alchemy and Rosicrucianism that basically is the key, listen to this, to immortality. Man can live forever if he discovers the Philosopher's Stone. The very first Harry Potter book that was written was called Harry Potter and the, Al or the Philosopher's Stone. In America, it was called the Sorcerer's Stone. So millions of teenage boys and girls know more about the secret than you do. 
And our public school said, oh, these kids got to read this book. We're just glad that they're reading something. Well, what if they were reading Playboy? Amen? Amen. It's the same garbage. Now, God said, Mike, you want to know the secret? Yeah, well, yeah, I want to know the secret. God said, we're going to study a word in the Bible. I like to study words in the Bible because I think the Bible has words. And they mean something, right? God knows how to talk, and God knows how to talk in English. Amen? Mm. So I said, God, what word? And he said, secret. Let's study the word secret. And I'm going, cool. That makes sense, doesn't it? You want to know what the secret is? Let's look at the word secret. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are what? Revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made where? David said when I was made in secret. And what did we discover about that last night? The secret of the womb. Is where David was made. So the secret has something to do with how David was made. And curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. For God shall bring every work into judgment with what? Every secret thing. God said, God is the revealer of secrets, isn't he? Let's get back to this secret sin thing. Because God says, I'm going to reveal them to you, just me and you, personally. How many of you know that to be true? Say amen. The Holy Spirit of God shows up, knocks on your door, and says, we need to talk. That's one witness. Remember what Jesus said? If thy brother sin, go to him. So the Holy Ghost shows up and says, we need to talk. I saw what you did. And I'm revealing it to you first. You see, God follows his own pattern. Thank God. Amen? Because there are things about us we don't want anybody else to know. Come on. Don't make me feel bad. Raise your hand. Oh, really, Brother Mike? No, the Holy Ghost came. and said, Mike, I'm going to deal with some things that nobody knows about, but I'm going to deal with them. Thank you, God. But see, if you reject that, then God's going to send a preacher to your house. Or, or that preacher's going to hammer your hide to the wall on Sunday morning, and you're going to think, he knows. See, that's God working in a church. You ought, you ought to thank God for a pastor that God will do that with. But if that doesn't work, you just mark my word. God's going to expose you for who you are. To a lot of people. Because God reveals the secret things. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my what? A secret place can be polluted. And who's going to go into it? Robbers. Who's the thief? Satan. He's a thief and a robber, isn't he? And he's going to go into the secret place and defile it. In the Old Testament, what was the only place secret from the Israelites? Only one man knew what it was and what was in there. What was it? It was the most holy place where the Ark of the Covenant was. Are you with me? And remember what that is. That's the cell nucleus where the DNA is stored. Get it? There it is right there. Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it where? In a secret place. What did we just say was the secret place? It was the most holy place, the cell nucleus. Do not put an idol in your secret place. And the people shall answer and say, that they would desire, now here it is, the book of Daniel, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret. That Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. And when I got to this point, I'm going, Daniel knew the secret. Daniel knew the secret. 
And, Deut and Daniel chapter 2 is the story of Nebuchadnezzar's image. Remember? The head of gold, the chest of silver, the thighs of brass, the legs and the feet of iron, but the toes, iron, mingled with clay. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time going into a lot of detail about Bible numerics and so on, but it means a lot. The fourth kingdom is where we're going to concentrate on. The iron mixed with miry clay. Think of something in the Bible that's made out of clay. You. Aren't you? Okay? Okay? We're made out of clay. The clay represents man. This fourth kingdom is not a kingdom of this world. This number four always points you to, watch this, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's where Paul said our real wrestling takes place. Amen? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the four powers, those, that fourth kingdom. The fourth beast that Daniel sees is diverse from the other three. He is not of this world. He is from the spirit realm. I don't have time to go into that tonight. Study this. I have a video coming out just on the number four, and I explain it in detail. When I have it out, I, I want you to get a copy of it so you'll know. But this fourth kingdom is all about a spiritual kingdom that dominates planet earth. Is there not a spiritual kingdom that's trying to dominate your life? Is there a spiritual kingdom that's trying to dominate your home? A spiritual kingdom trying to dominate your church? Is the one trying to take control of the country? Then why not take control of the entire earth? You believe it? Say amen. That's what the number four leads you to. That's what this fourth kingdom is all about. And what does it say about this kingdom? That they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. Daniel chapter 2 verse 43. He's explaining the fourth kingdom and why the toes are part iron and part clay. He said, and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with what? The seed of men is what? your DNA. Right? The seed of men is your DNA. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Now I'm going to show you in every Masonic cell. I can read symbols now like they're an open book because I know the secret. Once, that, once I knew the secret, you can't hide a symbol from me. I'll tell you what it is. And I'm going to tell you what this is. Albert Pike, watch this. Now, this fourth kingdom is, this, is the supernatural realm. Okay? And it's this, this satanic, demonic realm. That's the fourth kingdom. So think about this. Albert Pike said that this symbol here, the compass, represents the heavenlies, the heavenly realm. This symbol here represents the earthly realm. And notice that they are fused together. They're, they're not separated. They are joined together. Does everybody see that so far? This is they, and this is the seed of men. This is the heavenly and the earthly. The male, the female. Get it? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. There is a story you can believe it or not. It says, Genesis chapter 6, that the sons of God came and took the daughters of men to be wives. Watch this. The sons of God mingled with the daughters of men. Makes sense, doesn't it? We're going to show you some more. Albert Pike said, the square, therefore, is a natural and appropriate symbol of this earth. The compass is an equally natural and appropriate symbol of the heavens. The compass is the hermetic symbol of the creative deity male and the square of the productive earth or universe. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Heaven mingled with earth. Have you ever heard that before? Let's, let's move on. Now, heaven, all of the ancient pagans 
worshipped the sun god, didn't they? The Indians did, the Mayans did, the Greeks did, the Romans did, the Babylonians did, the Sumerians did, the Egyptians did. Everybody worshipped the sun god for some reason. But it's not the god of the universe, isn't it? So if it's not the god that you and I know, it's a false god, it's a devil, isn't it? And the sun is where? The sun is not on earth, is it? It's in heaven. They also worshipped a mother goddess of the earth. She is called Gaia, Isis, Ashtaroth, Ishtar, Easter, Diana, Venus, Mother Nature. And she is worshipped as a goddess because she is productive. She is fruitful. So watch this. I want you to think about this. What happens when the sun meets with the productive earth? It produces green things. Get it? Doesn't it? How do trees grow? How does grass grow? The sun meets the earth. And, that's, and the trees and the grass of the earth are the children of the union of the sun and the earth. You, do you understand that? Now, see this image here? It's hanging from a tree. And somebody's about ready to take it. Think of a story in the Bible. 46 words that the devil spoke to Eve. Who? That he spoke to Eve, trying to get her to partake of the child that was produced by the union of the sun and the earth. This is deep stuff. Are you getting it? Okay? You shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations ye shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under what? They worshipped the trees, didn't they? They worshipped under the trees. They worshipped where? In the groves. What were groves? There was little gardens that they planted and they put an image of a mother holding a little baby. Have you ever seen that one before? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? That which was is that which shall be. There is no new thing under the sun. And God said to the Israelites, if you see one of those, destroy it. I dare you. <laughs> okay? But he said, that's an abomination in the earth. Yet within three days, now watch this. Fruit hangs from a tree, doesn't it? I want you to think of things in the Bible that hang from a tree. Pharaoh shall lift up thy head from off thee, and thou shalt hang on a tree. Deuteronomy 21, And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, he that is hanged is accursed of God. That's why God did not want them to eat it. And the king of Ai, he hanged on a tree until eventide. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it at the ending of the gate of the city and raise thereon a great heap of stones that remaineth unto this day. What does that sound like to you? Jesus hung on a tree. And they took him down at even. And they put him in a great pit and they rolled a great stone. But that stone was rolled away. Amen? See, Jesus conquered his enemies that are cursed by taking on the curse for us. Somebody say amen. amen. Woo, I like it. I dig it. Masons, when you join their lodge, the very first thing that they have you do in the first initiation is put a rope around your neck. It's called a cable toe. And it has three strands. And I'll show you why tomorrow night. What are they acting out in the Masonic Lodge? The cursed one who hung from a tree, not Jesus. The Antichrist. Sons of God, daughters of men. The heaven principle, the earth principle, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they bear children to them. That is, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That happened in Genesis chapter 6. You can believe that or not. That's exactly what happened. 
Seed equals what? Genetics. And so here's what God said in Genesis 3. The Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Who? The serpent and the woman. And between thy seed... Now who is her seed? It's Christ. And us. But it's Christ, right? Literally? Was Christ born of a woman? Literally. Then why isn't this literal? It is. The seed of the serpent is always rec uh, recognized in the Bible by called, being called children of Belial. Here it is. Certain men, children of Belial, sons of Belial, children of Belial, sons of Belial, the sons of Belial as thorns. What was the ground cursed with? What did Jesus wear on his head? What was Paul? A messenger of Satan. An angel of Satan to buffet him. What was it? It was the son of Belial. Children of Belial, you are of your father the devil. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. Thou child of the devil. Is this just simply metaphorical language meant to draw us into imaginations? No. God is telling you that this, there's a war going on between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. You believe it or not. Have you ever seen this symbol before? In its simplest form, it's called the Star of David. David doesn't have a star. You will not find the Star of David mentioned anywhere in the Scriptures. Will you? And by the way, did God ever tell us to draw out symbols of Him? Images. He said, stay away from them, didn't he? So I think we ought to. So let me show you what this means. This is pointing up like the square and the compass. Sons of, notice the opposites here. White, dark. White, dark. Up, down. Sons of God, daughters of men. This is the secret. They are mingling themselves with the seed of men. See this serpent around this with his tail in his mouth? See that? That's called the Ouroboros. Guess what it means? This is, they call it a secret of immortality. The symbol of immortality. The symbol of eternal life. Now that doesn't look like salvation to me, does it? By the way, that's a dragon. A serpent. The devil does not have the key to immortality, although he tried to tell Eve that he had it. Ye shall not surely die. He tried to tell her that she would live forever if she listened to him and not her husband, whose name was Adam, who was a picture of Jesus Christ. Get it? So guess what this means? Albert Pike says, the mouth of the dragon represents the woman. Open. The tail represents the male. This is the earth this is the heavenly. Sons of God mingle with the daughters of men. How many of you see that? Wow. This symbol is described as, is, has a strong relation to what is known as the androgyny. You know what androgyny is? It's a combination of male and female in one body. Sons of God, daughters of men. The androgyny is united male and female principles together. This is the prime primordial end to the human endeavor. Did you get that? This is where they say mankind is headed in his next phase of evolution. He is headed toward the day where he is sons of God mingled with daughters of men. The fusion of the opposites. The heavenly realm and the earthly realm. The reunion, the reunion which births totality and creation. It is not unlike the idea of androgyny, which is a duality complete, a return to wholeness. Here it is again. Sons of God, daughters of men. Sons of God, daughters of men. Look at that. We're going to find out what that means in a little bit. Have you ever seen the yin-yang symbol? Okay. The yin-yang symbol is this Chinese symbol, and we're going to see it again in a little bit, is the Chinese concept of, e of um, balance. You ever heard somebody in karate saying, you need to find balance? 
Right? You saw Karate Kid? <laughs> He's being taught a pagan, new age, from hell concept of balance. That concept of balance refers to, in, in their simplistic form, they say there's a little good in all evil and a little evil in all good. Now, is that correct according to the Bible? The Bible says, what fellowship hath light with darkness? None. So this concept is the sons of God mingled with the daughters of men united together. That's what this is. This image here, remember these two pillars, what are they? Jacob and Boaz. I'm telling you all the Masonic symbols. The 23 chromosome pairs, Jacob and Boaz. See this twining around here? What is that? DNA. DNA. We have... Uh, these four elements here, which I didn't cover tonight, but I do cover in another video, they represent the four chambers of the heart, or they represent the throne of God. Because here you have a man, a lion, uh, an ox, and an eagle. Those are the four cherubims that supported the throne of God in Ezekiel chapter 1. And who wants to sit on the throne of God? Satan does. Here's the square and compass, sons of God, daughters of men. Here we have the keystone of Freemasonry. Now, what did we say last night that DNA was? It's a crystal, so therefore it's a stone. The keystone of Freemasonry is what unites this side with this side. We have opposites here. We have the sun and the moon. They are opposites, night and day, drawn together by the keystone. It's DNA. That's what that means. The checkerboard floor, dark and light, intermixed together. Sons of God, daughters of men. I could go on this all night. Daniel said, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with iron clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. You've seen that symbol before. Carpenter's Union. Sons of God, daughters of men. I even found this in the Bible. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule. He maketh it out with a line. He fitteth it with the planes and he marketh it out with the compass. And maketh it after the figure of a man. What's this carpenter doing? He's making an idol. Do you, how many of you believe the Bible reveals all the secrets? Raise your hand. Washington, D.C. This image here is called an obelisk. It is a symbol of the male. The God, Osiris, Satan. On top of the Capitol building here is a statue of a goddess. How many of you knew that? No wonder the Capitol's all messed up. If I were president... I'd get rid of that thing and make a lot of people mad and be assassinated, but I would get rid of it. So watch this. The street layout of Washington, D.C. forms a square and compass. This point here points you to the male. This point here points you to the female. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, sons of God, daughters of men. See the two heads here? Albert Pike says one face is one way and one face is another way because th this represents the heavenly principle, the male. This represents the earthly principle, the female, and they're joined together in one body. Sons of God mingled with daughters of men. And what is this called? A brotherhood. I'm not saying if you belong to a union, you're going to hell. Okay? It's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that there are a lot of secrets in trade unions. How many of you believe that? Say amen. amen. Secret deals. Baphomet. The image of, of the God of the Knights Templar and Freemasons. He has female and male parts. One hand points up, one hand points down. He is the androgyny. He is the sons of God mingled with the daughters of men in one body. And who is this? It's Lucifer himself, isn't it? We're going to talk more about these arms a little bit later on. On his arms, he has salve and coagula. This is the process of alchemy. Alchemy was the ancient secret concept of trying to turn lead into gold. But you can't turn lead into gold, can you? Can't do it. So it didn't really mean lead into gold.
It meant turning humans into immortals, gods. That's what alchemy was about. And the process is you have to dissolve the old man first so you can coagulate into a new creature. That's what that means. That's a statue of George Washington in Washington, D.C. What does it look like? Do you think there's a conspiracy in our nation's capital? Remember what DNA looked like? So if I show you Masonic symbols that look like ladders, and they reach from earth into heaven, what are you looking at? DNA. Mingling heaven, or joining heaven with the earth. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. How many of you understand this so far? You're seeing it now in all the symbols. There it is here, and even here in this Masonic symbol, they put angels ascending and descending on it. They're telling you it comes right out of the Bible. What does the Tower of Babel look like? And what were they trying to do with it? Wow. And so I counted. I counted from my King James Bible. I've, it's, listen, that Bible has never, I've, I've never been able to prove it wrong yet. Rule number one, there are no mistakes in the Bible. Rule number two, if you think you found one, refer to rule number one. Because you are not smarter than God, who gave us a gift by way of His Holy Spirit. And that gift was the ability to translate unknown tongues. And He said, if a man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two and at the most three. You know how many original languages there were in the Bible? Three. Hebrew, Greek, and a little bit of Aramaic. And then He said, let one translate. And it's a gift, isn't it? I believe God knows how to translate Bibles. It's never failed. So I went to Genesis 11, Dennis, and I counted the exact number of words that were spoken by man as they build the tower. 46 of them. It's never been wrong yet. Does anybody know what May Day is? What a Maypole is? A Maypole represents the male. And the girls dance around it as they take their ribbons and twine it around the Maypole. It's a fertility dance. That's who the May Queens are. How many of you remember a song from Led Zeppelin? called Stairway to Where. And does, do they mention the May Queen in there? And do you think Led Zeppelin was being inspired by the Holy Spirit? No. They, one of the guys, I think it was Jimmy Page, moved into Aleister Crowley's mansion and he wrote Stairway to Heaven while under I, I, in a trance. And she is buying your Stairway to Heaven. This is Rosalind Chapel. I talk about that in, a, in the Da Vinci Code video that I have. Rosalind Chapel was, Chapel was built by the Knights Templar. They put Freemason symbols all in it. And they built a, a pillar called the Apprentice Pillar. What does it look like? And, and Rosalind Chapel is supposed to be a rebuilding of Solomon's Temple. What is Solomon's Temple? And the pillar reaches from the ground to the ceiling. From the earth to the heaven. That's the secret. If you read the Da Vinci Code to see the movie, then you know the secret. Masonry talks about a winding staircase in the temple. And that when you reach the top, you reach the enlightenment of Freemasonry. Oh look, here's Jacob and Boaz. And here is a globe of the earth and a globe of the stars. What are stars? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Do you believe it now? Huh? You believe the secret from the Bible? 
I went to the Mother Lodge of Freemasonry in Washington, D.C., and the tour guide takes me, and I see a, a winding staircase. And I'm going, I know what that is. I didn't tell the tour guide that. But I know what it is. And it, there's two of them. One goes this way, and one goes that way. And they wind around to the sanctuary of the, of the temple. And so, dummy me, I'm going up the steps, and guess what I'm doing? 23 steps on this side, 23 steps on the other side. I'm not making this up. It's the secret, isn't it? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Statue of Liberty was given as a gift from French Freemasons to the American Freemasons. Guess what it has inside of it? Winding staircase. Dun, dun, dun. And this is, not, this is not liberty. This is a goddess. It's a statue. It's something God told us not to have. Do we not believe the Bible? Amen? And she holds the light of occult illumination in her hand. I saw this at the mall the other day. Rock music. How many of you believe that's inspired by the devil? Amen? And a stairway of DNA going from earth into heaven. Which you ought not be listening to. Bless God, I ain't listening to that junk. Me and Conway Twitty, I don't go for that stuff. In China, this secret's everywhere. Chinese always had a concept that at one point, listen to this, at one point the gods came down to the earth and that the kings, the emperors of China, were all called the sun gods because the emperors of China believed that they were the offspring of the gods who mated with their women. And they have a temple in China called Heaven on Earth Temple. Because they believe that is the place where the gods ascended, where the sons of God came and married the daughters of men. You see, every culture in the world has a story that says that gods came down and mated with women and created the titans, the giants, and something else. And I'll share it with you later. Have you ever seen this symbol before? The cross and the crown. It's not Christian. You don't need symbols. You got a Bible full of them. Amen? The male, the female. Sons of God mingle with the daughters of men. It's outside of a church in my town. You know what that's saying? If you're a Mason, you're welcome here. They know what it means. I didn't know it for years until I went, oh, I know what that means. I did one of those, John. Oh, I know what that means. Out in front of the Mother Lodge of Freemasonry, there are two sphinxes. Albert Pike says they represent Jacob and Boaz. What is Jacob and Boaz? The 23 chromosome pairs in the human cell where the DNA is stored. And what is a sphinx? It's the mixture of a man with a beast. What is the devil? He's a dragon. He's a serpent. He's a beast, isn't he? Think about it. What are the cherubs? They're heavenly beasts. John said, I saw the four what? Not the four humans. I saw the four beasts in heaven. Lucifer is a beast. A lot of those cherubims, they are beasts. They are angelic beasts. And the sphinxes represent the cross between humans and and those angels. You see the Da Vinci Code? See this symbol and this symbol. What does that represent? And what does that represent? The union of the male and the female, the sons of God with the daughters of men. Leonardo da Vinci knew this. He knew the secret or was part of the secret society. Some say it's the Priory of Zion. Some say that, that that didn't exist. But I'm telling you, Da Vinci knew it. Because in his painting of the Last Supper, this is clearly Jesus and this is clearly a woman. Supposed to be Mary Magdalene. But here's what it really represents. The sons of God and he's mingled with her, the daughters of men. Wow. Da Vinci himself, this is his character... Uh, character of John the Baptist. This is the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa is the androgyny. She has female parts and a male face. This is Da Vinci's face. Mm -hmm. 
And so was this, because da Vinci was queer. He was an androgyny. He was a male and female combined in one body. And so before he drew John the Baptist, he drew a sketch in his book called Angel in the Flesh. And it was, a, I'm not showing you the rest of it, but Angel in the Flesh had male and female parts on his body. You get it, don't you? Angel in the flesh, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. How many of you are convinced that that's the secret? <laughs> this is in a stained glass in Scotland. Jesus and a pregnant Mary Magdalene. But that's not who that is, is it? Sons of God, the daughters of men, and their offspring. A combination of the two. Here's Mary Magdalene pregnant. She's holding a skull. Why is she holding a skull? Because the skull is her husband. And guess who the skull is? It's the Antichrist. The Antichrist, watch this, the Antichrist has a deadly head wound, right? What did Goliath get? Deadly head wound. What did, I can't remember in the book of Judges, who was it that drove the nail through that guy's skull? pierced his skull, giving him a deadly head wound. Who was it that gave the devil a deadly wound in his head? At the place of the... It was Jesus. Isn't that cool? That's her husband. The Antichrist. The devil. And I'll, I'll show you something neat about this in a minute, all right? The list of the members of the Priory of Zion. From our video on the Da Vinci Code, from the Da Vinci Code movie and the book, and all this stuff, we have Blanche Devereaux, I've talked about her, Nicholas Flamel, Leonardo Da Vinci, Robert Flood, Isaac Newton, uh, Victor Hugo, who wrote uh, Beauty and the Beast, Claude Debussy, a composer, and a man by the name of Jean Cocteau. He was a French artist and film director. Jean Cocteau named himself... At be, being on the list of the grandmasters of the Priory of Zion, the men who knew the secret, named himself John the Twenty-Third, or John the Twenty-Third. John Cocteau, John the Twenty-Third, had a student training under him into the realms of the occult. This man later went on to become Pope John the Twenty-Third. And why did he name himself the Twenty-Third? Twenty-three chromosome pairs, where the secret is. JFK, I don't know who killed him, but I think I know what it was about. It was a ceremony. Here you have the obelisk, the symbol of the male. Okay, Daly Plaza, this is where the grassy knoll was where a Masonic temple used to be. The grassy knoll forms, the street layout forms an obelisk. And this is where Kennedy was killed. In the movie JFK, this man is telling this man that he knows who did it, and he says, who is it that had the means to do it? Who is it that had the means to cover it up? Who? Who? And then they stop and they show you a picture of this. It represents the Masons. Guess how old John F. Kennedy was when he was killed? 46. What is that? Sons of God, daughters of men. Remember the rose on the cross? The rose is a, is a symbol of secrecy. In the chapel, in um, Rosalind Chapel, the ceiling is covered with stone roses. Sub rosa means anything done in secret. This was a secret meaning in this movie. Sub rosa. Beauty, the beast. The beast, sons of God, mingling with the daughters of men. Alchemy symbols, male and female together in one body, male and female together, sons of God, daughters of men, sons of God, daughters of men. Do you see any DNA here? These are alchemical, these are hundreds of years old. What are these? Everybody say cross. cross. Well, y'all are pretty smart. <laughs> these are symbols of the cross. Remember what we found out last night about the cross? What is it? It's our chromosomes where the DNA is stored. Okay? So when you see something that looks like a cross, 
And Albert Pike, this is the very first chapter of Morals and Dogma in Albert Pike's book of Freemasonry. So what are we dealing with here? Now that you know the secret, you know what this is, don't you? It's an X chromosome where the DNA is stored. That's the secret. That's where the secret is. The Knights Templar had a secret. They are the progenitors of modern Freemasonry. Did you see National Treasure? I'm going to show you some more about that tomorrow night. But the Knights Templar discovered a secret, didn't they? And they always hid what the secret was. And X marks the spot. Now you know. I went into the Mother Lodge. That's what I found. It's in their temple. X marks the spot. Did you ever see that show? I talk about that in other videos. Okay? It's about an alien-human hybrid. That's what it's about. You ever seen this one? The X-Men. These are men who have had their DNA altered. So now they have superpowers. They are the supermen. They are the divine race. They are gods on the earth. And that's why they're called X-Men. See the two X's there? Does anybody know what a nexus is? It is the point at which two things converge and combine together. Isn't that something? Brand names. Okay? Who inspired this? Okay? What is that? Who did we say the skull was? Yeah. And what is this? The X chromosomes where the DNA is stored. You get it now? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's what that means. Those are skull and crossbones. All brand. The keys of the papacy. They're the crossed keys, right? It's an X chromosome. I'm going to talk about this tomorrow night. All these crosses and Albert Pike's morals and dogma, he was talking about the cross being a symbol of the secret, the secret of Freemasonry. Here's one here. What does this look like to you? See all these swastikas? This is an ancient temple floor discovered. All these swastikas here. This goes back way before Adolf Hitler. It was a symbol of immortality. It represented the chromosomes of the human body. See the contrasting colors here. Dark and white. Dark and white. Sons of God, daughters of men. The chromosomes. Um, here we have the yin-yang symbols. Here. Sons of God, daughters of men. What do we see here? What is that? That is the barracks in the naval base in San Diego, California. Here's the New World Airport. Lies in New World Order. Denver, Colorado. Here, 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 here. They just built that thing in the 90s. And they built it like that on purpose. The cross on a map is from the Knights Templar. It shows you the secret. The fleur-de-lis up here at the top. And by the way, there are 32, 33 points here. This is called a rose compass. Remember what rose meant? It was a symbol for secrecy. We're going to talk about that tomorrow night. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my what? Secret place. Now we know what it means. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, what goes on upon its belly? A serpent. Them shall ye not what? Why? Because they creepeth. And Jude warned us, for certain men crept in where? What did they do? They slithered in. He was talking about the false prophets of the last days, folks. And they've crept in unawares into our churches and our denominations, haven't they? Wow. God said, Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers what? He said, Don't mingle the seeds in the vineyard. Look at that. I am the vine, ye are the branches. It's DNA. Know ye not that you are the temple of God? Uh, and that if any man does what? Defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Jude warned that these guys would defile the flesh. 
Psalm 139, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. In thy book, all my members were written. Now, this is God's book. And last night we found out, you shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that ye keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Two rules concerning the book that God wrote. You cannot add to it, you cannot take away from it. So when they mingle themselves with the seed of men, that is the ultimate adding to God's word, isn't it? Makes sense, doesn't it? God said, don't do it. And why did he say, by the way, if they can mingle and mess up this book, then they're on the way to this one. If they change my DNA, they change the creature. So what happened when they started changing the Bible? The Bible is the DNA of the church. It's its life, isn't it? The Bible determines what the church is. And so when they started changing the DNA of the church, they changed the church. Wow. You know the secret, don't you? And how dangerous is this? Animal-human hybrids spark controversy. Genetic scientists right now, guess what they're working on? They're working on ways to change the human DNA by adding beast DNA. Cloned pigs modified for use in human transplants. Animal-human hybrids, embryos, a reality. Is this cow an animal-human hybrid? This, I found this this morning. Creation of genetically modified monkey heralds health revolution. Why would they try to change your DNA? Because your grandma has Parkinson's disease, and they can cure that now if they can change her DNA by adding a piece of monkey DNA in where her defective DNA is. But now she's not your grandma. She is a beast. Because if it's not all human, it's not human. Amen. And if it's not all the Bible, it's not the Bible. Amen? Amen. Transhumanism. This is the New Age movement. The New Age movement teaches that, watch this, the gods are going to descend down to earth and they're going to bring man to his next phase of evolution. Transhuman, above human gods. Ye shall be as gods, part of the 46 words that the serpent spoke to Eve. Have you seen these symbols? The yin yang here, here, what's that? It's the next chromosome, isn't it? Hybrids mingled together. BMW advertisement. The yin yang. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, and they say a perfect balance. In a courthouse, there is a woman, a goddess, holding a pair of balances in her hand. Albert Pike says that's a Freemason symbol. It doesn't represent the equality of man. It represents the balance. The sons of God mingled together with the daughters of men. That's what it represents. And she's holding three fingers up. I'll tell you why tomorrow night. You've got to come tomorrow night. <laughs> tell me what you see. A Sprite can. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hybrid. Mingled together. What do you see? Fused together. Wow. What do you see? Fusion. The symbols fuse together. What do you see? If you drink that, you are loopy. <laughs> Amen. You see, the, you see them fuse together? Branding. And remember, these people are being led by familiar spirits, aren't they? Okay? Synergy. You know what that means? Two things that cannot exist without each other. They, they join together so they can work together properly. That's what synergy is. And this concept is in the New Age movement, and now it's moving into the church. This is synergy, First Baptist Church in Tulsa. See the symbols? One pointing up, one pointing down. Guess what? Sons of God, daughters of men. The Synergy Church, a strategy for integrating small groups and Sunday school. Synergy Student Ministries. What do we have here? Gillette Fusion. 
See the symbol? Fuse together. Fusion church. Better together. You get it? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. And see this? I'm going to tell you what it means tomorrow night. You're close. You're very close to knowing what it is. Free will Baptist Sunday School literature. The New Age movement is moving into every facet of Christianity. Then the Pentecostal charismatic movement and the latter rain movement, the Elijah movement, the dreams and vision movement. Here's a group that promotes that. And they have a book called Your Unique DNA and Your Belief System Hold the Keys to Success. They're telling you that the secret to living the abundant life of Christianity is in your DNA. That's scary. Here's a book called The Secret. Have you heard of that? Book and a video called The Secret, marketed to business executives. It's called The Law of Attraction. It's actually witchcraft. It says that if you speak the right words and have the right positive thoughts, then by magic, those things will come to you. If you want to be rich, then you speak wealth out of your mind. That's called the law of attraction. The law of attraction actually has to do with the secret. Because in order for these gods to descend upon mankind and mingle themselves, man has to ask for it. You see, the, be the false prophet doesn't make everybody receive the mark. He causes them. They do it of their own free will. Two men are standing before the Israelites. One is the Son of God. The other one is the Son of the Devil. He is Barabbas. He is a murderer. He is pulled out of prison. Do you get it? The beast rise, rises up out of prison, doesn't he? And Pilate said, choose. Wow. So you know what the law of attraction is. It's witchcraft. So who said this? You have to begin speaking words of faith over your life. Your words have enormous creative power. The moment you speak something out, you give birth to it. This is a spiritual principle, and it works whether what you're saying is good or bad, positive or negative. Who said that? Take your pick. They both believe it. Joel Osteen and Joyce Myers, who lives in my county, practicing sorcerers. And they're leading millions of people and to receiving a mark on the right hand or forehead. Let me hear you say amen. amen. Here is uh, in the Kabbalah, which is Jewish mysticism, which is everything God told the Jews not to learn from the Canaanites that they learned, they incorporated into the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah has a principle called Adam Kadmon, which is the new human. A God human. And they talk about full DNA activation. This is all through the New Age movement where they say in, in the New Age, when we turn ourselves into gods, we're going to activate our DNA. Guess what they're referring to? Spiritual DNA. This is from a, a pastor's magazine talking about spiritual DNA. He says, I am no longer merely confess that I am the righteousness of Christ. I realize that with his DNA in me through his blood, I could be nothing else. I realize the attributes of his DNA reside in me, whether dormant or active. He is teaching people that what the Gnostics taught everybody is that they have a God on the inside of them. And if they perform the right rituals, this God will come out of them and they will be gods. New Age terms, Reformation, Synchronicity, Great Awakening, Tuning In, Transformation, Community, Connectedness, Entry Point, Paradigm Shift, Synergy, Center Point, Guided Imagery, Imagination, Convergence, Elevation of Man. These are all New Age terms. These are all these terms are in the church right now. All of them. Paradigm Shift refers to the day when man becomes God on this earth and becomes immortal. That's the day when they seed themselves with the seed of men. And so there's a conference coming up called Shift. It refers to the paradigm shift. These are the leaders of the emerging church that I warned you about two years ago. They're leading everybody into this New Age concept. This guy is speaking at the Free Will Baptist D6 conference this September. And he believes in the coming paradigm shift. What does he believe in? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. One of their speakers, Brian McLaren, said, we are in a time of transition. Rethinking, reimagining, 
re-envisioning, a time for asking new questions and seeking answers that are both new and old, fresh and seasoned, surprising and familiar. What does it mean in today's world to be a follower of God in the way of Jesus Christ? He's taking people to the paradigm shift. Take a look at this symbol for a minute and tell me what you see. Do you see the secret? Connection. Sons of God, daughters of men. This is Connection Church. Leonard Sweet and Rick Warren. Leonard Sweet is a New Ager posing as a Christian. Rick Warren supports this guy. Leonard Sweet wrote a book called Quantum Christianity. And in it, he endorses the union of the human and the divine. And he calls it Kundalini's fire. Remember what Kundalini was? The serpent coiling up your spine, giving you enlightenment. How many of you believe in aliens, UFOs? I don't believe in beings from other planets. I believe in devils. And guess what the whole alien thing is about? New Ager Jack Purcell channeling a spirit called Lazarus says, We want to talk to you of love. This is the aliens talking. We want to talk to you of love. We want to blend with you. We want to blend our energy with yours so we can touch each other, so we can work together. That's synergy. That's connection. New Age mystic Ken Carey channeling angels. He says, we are here to merge. To blend with your human egos. To help your race become the central guidance system of a vast new being. Have you ever seen this TV show? Heroes. It's about people who have different DNA than you and I. And they are gods. You know this name heroes, you know where it came from? It came from Greek mythology. The heroes were the offspring of the gods who mated with human women. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. How many of you believe it so far? John Mack wrote a book on alien abductions. He said a new life form must evolve if the human biological and spiritual essence is to be preserved. It is difficult to ignore the fact that the UFO abduction phenomenon is taking place in the context of a planetary crisis of major proportions. Abductions seem to be concerned primarily with two related projects. Changing human consciousness to prevent the destruction of the Earth's life and a joining of two species for the creation of a new evolutionary form. David Jacobs in The Secret Life said, all the evidence points to there, the aliens, being here to carry out a complex breeding experiment in which they seem to be working to create a hybrid species, a mix of human and alien characteristics. From Alienshift.com, once one person writes, they told me they were there on a mission, the aliens. They belonged to a brotherhood of civilizations with others from which they had received specific orders for our world. They pointed out that we have always been guided indirectly by certain great personalities, like Christ, who they believe, who have passed through our civilizations throughout history. These so-called masters, some approaching divinity, have always had contact with the extraterrestrials. I had a feeling that these beings had been, on, had been sent on a mission pertaining to the evolution of our planet. That's what the whole alien conspiracy is all about. It all ties in with the New Age movement and Freemasonry and everything else that we've talked about. Here's a movie out called The Day the Earth Stood Still. See the symbol? The fusion of the two. Do you know what it's about? It's about how the aliens come down and they're going to destroy our planet unless we change. Unless we evolve. You get it, don't you? That's what it's about. You know what genies are? Genies from Arabian myth are demons who can beget young on mankind. Genies were gods who made it with human women and produced the heroes of Arabian myth. Remember a movie? What was the theme song to this movie? A whole new world. Your kids did, your grandkids did. They saw it. Now, this very quick, what time is it? What time is it? 12 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Good, because I'm almost done. 
We're going to go to the Bible now just for a minute. I want you to think about this. They're all teaching. They're all teaching. The Freemasons, the New Agers, the UFO people, the, all the weirdos of the world. They're all teaching that the gods are going to descend upon mankind and help him to his next phase of evolution. That's what they're all... How many of you see that so far? You see that in everything we've seen. Guess what really is going to happen? These angels are not going to come down of their own free will. They're kicked out. Revelation chapter 12 tells you when this event's going to happen. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And it's at this time the New Agers are perceiving that when these angels, when they see these angels falling, they think they're floating down. But they're falling. And the New Age is teaching that when they come down, they're here to help us. That sounds like the government, right? Hi, I'm from the government, and I'm here to help you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we have this stimulus money we would like to give you. That's when this is going to happen. How many, of you, how many of you get it so far? At least just a tiny piece of it. But you, you're pretty sure that that's what's going to happen. Okay, now I spent two hours telling you the secret and trying to make it make sense to you so that you can see it not only from the Bible, but you can understand that there doesn't seem to be a realm in our life right now that in some way is not trying to promote or market this concept to people. It's everywhere. It's even in the church. So your best, I mean your best way... I was going to say bet, but it's not a bet. Your best way is just to stick with the book. Because men lie. Some do it and they don't know about it. They're just, they're just ignorant. They just didn't know. I've preached things that I've gone, what in the world was I doing? But your best way is to just stick with the old book. You can't trust men. I told you that last night. can't trust men. And if you're sitting here tonight after two hours and you don't buy a thing I'm selling tonight, then I challenge you, go to the book and ask God, God, was my cogger telling the truth? And if, I, and if you find out that I'm not, and if I find out that I'm not, I will repent. Because I'm not about me. You ought to know that by now. I'm not about me. I'm about this. And, base, and the discovery of the greatest secret that mankind has held for 6,000 years. God reveals it all. So let me ask you a question. Let's get back to reality tonight. What is it that you're wanting to ask God? What is it that you're really wanting to know? You know what I think? You know what I always tell my people? See, I believe in the simplicity of Christ. If you go to these New Age churches, they will make it hard for you to attain this level of, of perfection that you think that you ought to get to as a Christian. You'll never reach it this side of heaven. Do you believe that? Say amen. You're not perfect now and haven't been perfect. You're not going to be perfect until we shed off this old flesh. But I try to keep things pretty simple for my church. I give them two things. Prayer and Bible reading. Prayer and Bible reading. So, Brother Mike, we're having a problem. You know, what, you know what I think you ought to do? I think you ought to pray and I think you ought to get in the Scriptures and, and you'll find the answer there. In fact, if you pray, God will lead you to the Scriptures and you'll find the answer there. How many believe that? That's, see, that's simple, isn't it? You don't, need, you don't need a bunch of psychology. You, you don't need the, the psychologist behind the pulpit telling you seven tips on how to be successful at this. You don't need that. You just need to pray and read your Bible. That's your thing. And so I'm asking you tonight, the greatest secret that mankind has ever tried to keep that it's not written down anywhere, God shows it in the Bible. So let me ask you, what is it that you, want, you would really like to know from God? What is it that you would really, really like to know from God? If you, God said, God said, He promised, Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Do we believe that? You pray, and then you read, and God will show you. Fear not, 
I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. I am the first and I am the last. And beside me there is no God. Folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of Prophetic Research Ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. We're going to go back and we're going to visit our old, almost almost called him our old friend. Uh, he's not my friend. He is our adversary. Uh, his name is Baphomet. Now, I don't know if you remember about a year or so ago, we did a video teaching called Baphomet, the God of Transformation. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to revisit some of that material to sort of, uh, sort of refresh our minds, as it were, as to who he is. We're going to know our enemy today, um, all about Baphomet and all about this idea of transformation. Because I saw an article last week that came out, and I saw it, and I went, I know exactly what that is. It just, it's almost like the idea of Baphomet has become reality right in front of our very eyes. So we're going to talk about Baphomet, what he represents, the signs, the symbols that are associated with him. We're also going to look at this idea of transformation. Now, I believe in transformation, and the Bible uses that word. I believe that one of these days, I am going to be changed into an immortal by the power of Jesus Christ through the cross, through the words of this book. I believe that I'm going to be changed, transformed. Let's go to the scriptures and let's look at this transformation process. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. I love this chapter. I love this entire chapter. It talks about Jesus uh, ruling and reigning. It talks about putting all, putting all of his enemies under his feet. It talks about the resurrection itself, how that we must die first, and that it's like a seed being planted in the ground. We don't bury people that are dead so much as we, as we plant them. <clears throat> because out of that seed of this corrupt body, and this body must corrupt, out of that seed rises up a new body that doesn't even look like what you put in the ground. And I like that idea. And then Paul finishes up the idea in verse 51. And I love the fact that my Bible reveals the mysteries. And so Paul said, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. One of these days, this mortal body is going to give way to an immortal body. This flawed physical being that I am right now, this sinful nature that I have, is all going to vanish away, and I will be transformed by the power of Jesus Christ and His resurrection. Romans chapter 1, verse 22 actually uses, in the King James, the word transformed and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God now <clears throat> I like to look at opposites I like to see what the Bible says about one thing and then you look in the world and you see the exact opposite of that let me let me get uh, let me get Marilyn in on this here Marilyn Ferguson the author of the Aquarian Conspiracy uh, and this book with the, uh, the Tri-Catcher Triple Helix logo on here says personal and social transformation in our time. So we're going we're gonna to look at this here for a minute. Here's the opposites here. Here, this book says that we are going to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And our minds are being renewed according to knowledge, according to the knowledge of the Word of God and the wisdom given to us in this sacred book called the Holy Bible. That's the transformation that God has in store for His people. The newage, and I call it newage because it rhymes with sewage, the newage movement says that there is going to be a transformation of mankind. Marilyn Ferguson actually writes in here that it's related to his genetic structure, his genes. 
his chemical makeup, his biology is going to be changed, transformed somehow. And the re instead of a renewing of the minds through the pages of the Bible, I you to get this. Marilyn says that it's going to take place as a result of a paradigm shift. We're going to see some things related to that here in a little bit as we revisit this material to see just how relevant it is. Where do you see the article that came out last week that showed me that Baphomet was real? Okay, Not just some make-believe thing. He's real. He's the God of transformation. So a paradigm shift is going to take place. Something's going to happen on the earth and everybody, everybody that's not in line with this Bible is going to turn and they're going to look at this Bible and say, this is junk. We don't want anything to do with it anymore. It's already happening. It's already happening in the church. What a shame that is. It's happening in the church because the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. By the way, that's what, that's what Joseph Smith said he saw, an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work. So here, the Bible is laying out an idea that there is a change a coming. It's, it's in the air. A transformation is just ahead of us. If you listen to the political uh, speeches, if you listen to the TV shows and the movies, and you listen to the commercials, and then you listen to the preachers preach and the language they're using, they're all talking about a shift is going to take place, a transformation. Some, everything is going to change. Barack Obama um, campaigned on this idea of change. We're going to change everything in this world. <sighs> Fasten your seatbelts because the transformation process is, is pretty rough. Okay, uh, It's pretty rough. So plant your feet on solid ground, build your house upon the rock, and you'll be fine. But it says here in this verse that, number one, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And then number two, he said, no marvel if his ministers are also transformed into the ministers of righteousness. And I want you to, I want you to kind of think about this for a minute. The Bible says in, in 1 Peter that we who are born again, who are saved uh, by the blood and by the incorruptible seed of the Word of God, those of us who are born again, um, we, are a, we are a nation, a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices unto God. And I want you to think about the opposite then. If Satan is transformed and his people are transformed, it says here that they shall be, uh, there is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed. His ministers, let's say these, these sub devils that all operate under, under Lucifer. And then all of the people, all of the people that are trans, that are transformed by the New Age movement and by the secret cults and all of this stuff. They're transformed. They also wish to offer sacrifices. Who, who are they going to go for? Who are they going to go after? Who are they going to try to sacrifice? Thus brings in this idea of persecution of God's people. It's coming down the road as the world grows ever darker and turns more toward Lucifer and away from the Ten Commandments and away from the God of the Bible. They become, Jesus said, number one, twofold, the child of hell. And number two, they become the fierce enemies of those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ. That's just kind of what we've got to look forward to down the road. But if that bothers you, then look past that and see the glory that awaits us on the other side. So this image of Baphomet that we have seen, we're going we're gonna to break this down. This goat, half human, half goat, this half male, half female, the horns, the fingers, the DNA, all of this stuff we're going to look at. But I saw it become reality. I want you to notice in Baphomet's image that he is, a, he is called the androgynous God. Andro meaning man, gynous meaning woman. The androgynous, the fusion of male and female in the body of a goat. Look at the story. 
Goy. It's a girl goat in a boy goat's body. Ag research experiments on genetically modified goats. Let me stop right here. Genetically modified. Everything now is becoming genetically modified. We've genetically modified the seeds by way of Monsanto and other companies. We have genetically modified the cows, the pigs, the mice, the rats, the rabbits, the goats, the sheep. The genetic modification of humanity is literally just around the corner. And the corner is really, really close here. Uh, and God said, don't do it. God said, don't do it. See, this goes back to this DNA thing. And I, I don't want to revisit this too much. This idea of DNA is the book that God wrote. God wrote it out and said, leave it alone. Don't add to it. Don't take it away. Don't alter it. Don't diminish from it. Don't mess with my book that I wrote. And so scientists says, oh, wow, what a neat book. I don't like the way it's written. We're going to rewrite it. So ag research experiments on genetically modified goats have resulted in the animals producing mostly transgender offspring, which are being milked to find out whether they carry the intended human protein. Here, stop right here again. I'm reading this and I'm thinking of scripture after scripture um, to deal with this thing. Number one, the transgender issue. We're going to deal with that. Number two, this idea of producing milk. It is the opposite. Listen to this now. Here is the milk of the word of God. Okay, A land that flows with milk and honey flows with the sweetness and the purity of the milk of the word of God. This is the milk of God right here to feed our souls. And the devil says, you know, let's, I'm going to mess with that a little bit. And so here this idea of milk feeding people, giving them nourishment and altering the genetic structure. Uh, the article says the goats have been bred on the state science company's uh, Raukura facility in Hamilton. I think this is in New Zealand, where experiments are being done to create pharmaceuticals. Think about it. Soil and Health New Zealand spokesman Stephen Browning, who recently toured the facility, said 75% of the goats were females in sterile male bodies. Ag research staff refer to them as goys, the combination or the fusion of girls and boys. Let's look at Baphomet again very quickly. We notice that he is, he has female parts, he has male parts, he is part goat, part uh, human. He has, he has wings, therefore that shows the, significant, this, uh, the signification of him being an angelic being fused into the body of a human being. The hand pointing up, the hand pointing down, the three horns, we're going to talk about the pentagram, we're going to talk about all of those things. Um, Baphomet, this term Baphomet, this is uh, from Encyclopedia Americana. This is from Encyclopedia Americana. Baphomet signifies Baphometeos, baptism of metis or baptism of fire or the Gnostic baptism and enlightening of the mind. Remember what we said. Baphomet being the god of transformation, transformation has everything to do with the mind. The Bible can either change your mind and change your attitude and change your heart toward God's way, or there's going to be a great big gigantic paradigm shift that's going to take you away from the Bible, and you're going to say, I don't believe that book anymore. The Bible is full of, in fact, in fact, when Dan Brown, let me pull Dan, Danny Boy in here, when Dan Brown wrote uh, The Da Vinci Code, there was an agenda in the Da Vinci Code. And I caught it. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff in there. This is not the Da Vinci Code. This is uh, the lost symbol. Uh, when, when he wrote the Da Vinci Code, there was an agenda. And that agenda was to convince people that this Bible was not true. Okay? So the, it's working. And people are disbelieving the Bible more and more. I wonder what it's going to be. I can speculate and I can guess. And I don't like to do that because I don't like being wrong. But I wonder what's going to happen that is literally going to shift the entire scheme of humanity and they're going to think and believe that this Bible is not true. God says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 11, number 11 is the number for confusion. God says he shall therefore he shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That is the paradigm shift that's coming just down the road. So this idea that uh, this Baphomet image represents the transformation 
um, of people's thoughts and people's minds um, is, is absolutely incredible. This, this idea of Baphomet representing the enlightening of the mind, that's the paradigm shift. That is the transformation of people's minds. That is this baptism of fire that mankind is about to go into. Let's look at what else the Bible says. We see that Baphomet is, is part beast and part human. And here's an interesting thing. We see in Revelation 13, we see a beast rising up out of the sea. He has seven heads and ten horns and all the crowns. And he's like a lion and a leopard and a bear and a dragon's giving him all of his power. And this is real interesting to me in reading Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Let me stop right here. We're going to talk about it in a little bit. We're going to talk about those who believe that God is both male and female. That is a heresy. We know now which God that is. It's not the same God that's the God of this Bible. And they use this verse as a reference, saying, well, God, God created man in his image. See, we don't, have to, we don't have to go any farther than that. The Bible says it's his image. I wonder why the NIV committee is so staunch and adamant about re even replacing their own NIV with a gender-neutral Bible that neutralizes the gender of God the Father. I think it has something to do with Baphomet. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. It does not say that God is male and female and created man, a male and female, in an androgynous body. God created male. God created female. Two separate processes, actually. Okay? He took a rib from Adam and he created a female from that. His exact opposite. That's what God did. In verse 28, And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the every living thing that moveth upon the earth. The interesting thing about Baphomet is God gave man dominion over all the beasts of the earth. And now we're looking at a situation in the last days where it looks like now that beasts are going to have dominion over man. Let's look at how this takes place. We look at Baphomet. We see that he is part human and part beast. Daniel chapter 2, verse 43. We've talked about this many times in relation to the fourth kingdom which represents principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, these cherubs or these uh, cherubim, these angelic realm beasts that are devils, that are evil angels, the Bible calls them. This is the fourth kingdom that Daniel refers to. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, the miry clay is human beings, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with miry clay. We are literally going to see a time when mankind is going to be mingled with these, with these beasts, these devils, these gods, these evil angels, literally inside of his DNA. This Baphomet image truly represents the transformation of mankind. Did you ever see the, the movie? It's an old movie, The Island of Dr. Moreau. The island of Dr. Moreau was about this, this evil scientist on this island that was fusing humans and animals together. Think about the Twilight series. Think about this whole idea of a werewolf, a man and a beast in the same body, in the same genetic structure. It's, that's what that's referring to. This is why you shouldn't be reading in books like that and going to movies like that. That's why you shouldn't be doing it. It's actually preaching a false gospel. Here we have a vampire who is a living dead person. Do you see the opposites here? Anyway, this idea of the transformation of mankind that the New Age movement talks about is directly related to the transformation of his DNA, literally minging this, mingling this beast, animal, dragon, whatever you want to call it, seed, into the very DNA of man. This was typified in Nebuchadnezzar himself. So for a period of the Bible calls seven times, and I think that might be a reference to seven years, for a period of this time, Nebuchadnezzar, look what the Bible says, let his heart be changed from man's 
and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. This, I believe, is what was referenced in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, when the Bible talks about the man of sin, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God. The New Testament plainly tells you that the temple of God is this body that God himself has built. Literally, the beast is going to dwell. Let me stop and think about it. I have, as a born-again Bible-believing Christian, I have the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ dwelling in me, ruling my temple, my tabernacle, the Word of God being the rule book that guides and leads this little kingdom that's going on inside of my heart. Then we look at the opposite. We clearly see here that the beast is ruling, not from necessarily a geographic location, although I believe Jerusalem is part of that, but literally on the inside of human beings. He is reigning as God from the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's the lie the paradigm shift that everybody is going to believe. And notice how the Bible describes the false prophets of the last days who are leading the cause. Remember, remember a beast rises up out of the earth in Revelation chapter 13. And he, he kind of looks like a lamb. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, six things, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And the cause, those who are bringing about the cause are the false prophets and false teachers of the last days. Those whose conscience have been seared with a hot iron. They deceive others and they deceive themselves. And Peter described them in Second Peter chapter 2. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in what? In their own corruption. How did they get corrupt? They were born again. Not of incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. They were born again. They had a paradigm shift. They had a great awakening by corruptible seed. That's what that means. They're going to perish in their own corruption. But he refers to them as natural brute Beasts. So this idea of Baphomet, and here, and just think about this. Here, this, this, this uh, agricultural research farm in New Zealand produces, literally. I mean, it wasn't a monkey, it wasn't a rat, it wasn't a rabbit, it wasn't a dog, it wasn't a cricket, it wasn't a cow. It was a goat. And they, the article went on to say that, well, it was kind of, you know, kind of accidental. We don't know how it happened. It just happened that way. I don't think it was accidental at all. I think there is a cause that is taking place. It was on. It was. It was purpose driven. Okay. Um, and a goat that now produces milk to feed people that is both male and female. If you look at again at the image of Baphomet, you'll see that this goat human has breasts to produce milk, to feed people, not with the incorruptible word of God, but with the corruptible seed, the corruptible milk. The words uh, that Paul spoke about uh, when he was referring to Hymenaeus and Philetus, and he said, their words doth eat as a canker, literally a cancer. The true word of God will preserve you and keep you and give you eternal life. The corrupted seed, the corrupted words are cancerous. And they're like sour milk, and they will destroy. So literally, we are having Baphomet right in front of our very eyes. This God of transformation epitomized. I believe, I believe this is a sign. The birth of the male and the female goat together. In Exodus chapter 22, we have this verse. It's in the 72nd chapter of the Bible, and you've heard me talk about this number 72 quite extensively. Um, the 72nd chapter of the Bible gives a, a strong warning. Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. Now, God wasn't 
kidding. He was, he was dead serious. God also talked about how you're not supposed to gender cattle of a diverse kind. You're supposed to keep the genders separate. You're supposed to keep them away from one another and not allow them to procreate and produce these various strains. You're not to mingle the seed in the field. You're not even to wear a woolen coat and a linen coat. One, of course, linen made out of vegetable material and woolen made from animal material. You, God said you're not supposed to wear them together. It's, it's confusion. It's, the word con means with and fusion. With fusion. It's confusion. And God said don't do it. Don't mingle these things together. This is exactly what's going on. And God said, you're not to lie, man or woman, carnally with a beast. We go back to Genesis chapter 6. The Son of God, literally those beast angels lying, taking wives of human women. We're seeing that taking place right now. Look at this. Here's an article from 2008. We have created animal Human embryos already, says a British team. Here's another one. Health Secretary Alan Johnson. This is uh, from Great Britain. DNA mix he embryos won't create Frankenstein babies. No, it would be much worse than that. That was uh, from uh, 2008. And now we're, we've moved forward three years now from 2008. And we're hearing constantly about the mixture of animals and humans and the, and the mixturing and the mixing of the genetic structure and the altering of man's DNA, linking it with animal DNA. We're just literally right around the corner from the transformation of mankind. And now, we, now we've given birth to the Baphomet goat. The goat that is both male and female. And it's interesting. It was interesting to me. This idea of a goat. Goats are not sheep. And our shepherd knows the difference, doesn't he? You see, I'm one of these. I think there's a lot of people in churches every Sunday that are playing church. I mean, you, you know that, don't you? I did at one time, and maybe you have too. The shepherd knows the difference. He knows the difference between the sheep and the goats. He knows the difference between the wheat and the tares. See, the enemy has come in and sown tares in the field. With, along with the incorruptible seed, he's sown in all these tares in the field. And the, the laborers went to the master and said, Hey, you know, what are we going to do with this? And the master said, Let it grow. Let it grow. When it's time for harvest, we'll separate it all out. And we'll take the wheat and we'll store it in the house of my father. But we'll take the tares and we'll cast them into the fire so that they'll burn. Think about it. Separating the sheep from the goats. Matthew chapter 25. And before him shall be gathered all nations... And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. That word nation has to do with ethnicity, has to do with, um, and I don't want you to think that I'm thinking, well, all the black people are going to be over here and all the white people are going to be over here. This ethnicity thing has everything to do with the Bible word generations, literally their genetics their genes, their DNA structure. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. And there is something interesting I want to show you here from the Bible. Uh, and this just came to me. Matthew chapter uh, 25 is where Jesus records all of this about the sheep and the goats. And I want us to count. We like to count things. And I want us to count this pattern in the scripture. And uh, I want you to notice that here's, here's the criteria for separating the sheep from the goats. We're going we're gonna to count this. Verse 34, uh, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, this is the sheep, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. See that number six again? Small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. There's that number six again. Genesis chapter six, the fusion 
of the angelic world and the human world or the beast and the human. And this is their criteria, six things that the shepherd uses to separate the sheep from the goats. And the same thing here is uh, uh, in verse 41 concerning the goats. Depart from me, ye cursed. Notice he calls the sheep the blessed and he calls the goats the the cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels for I was hungered and you gave me no meat I was thirsty and you gave me no drink I was a stranger and you took me not in naked and you clothed me not sick and in prison and you visited me not sick and in prison six things here okay six things this number six very important the hexagram the fusion of two opposites together this is what our heavenly father whose son, Jesus Christ, the great shepherd, is going to do at the last days. He's going to know who the sheep are. He's going to go know who the goat is. He's going to know who the goats are in the last days. And then we get to this idea of Baphomet being the androgyny. The male and female fused together in the same body. And I mentioned it before, this false doctrine floating around. That God was male and female, and still is, and that when he created Adam, he created Adam to be in his image, the androgynous God. Not so. That is not so, according to the King James Bible. But I see in this idea a doctrine, a day coming, when the God of androgyny will recreate man in his slash her image. That's what I see. Um, a quote, and you may already know the answer to who said this. This is a quote from a tell evangelist. Then he created Eve out of Adam. Now, actually, God didn't name her Eve. Adam named her Eve later. That wasn't her name. Her name was Adam. Adam. When God said Adam, they both came. Their authority was one and the same together. Now, let me, let me stop right here. This doctrine is what allows a lot of, boy, I don't want to just categorize them all as Pentecostal slash charismatic, but it's in the liberal Christianity realms as well. But this doctrine here is what allows uh, those who believe in female pastors and preachers and bishopettes to circumvent the Bible, the Bible, when the Bible says, let the women keep silence in the churches, they say, well, that doesn't mean it because, you know, we're really, we have the same authority. That's where that comes from. So the likes of Joyce Myers and Paula White and uh, all of these other uh, preacherettes who are standing up behind pulpits usurping authority over their husbands instead of learning at home, this is where they get it from because they really believe that it's all the same. Their authority was one and the same together. They had always been together, even when she was still part of him. He was as much female as he was male, like God is. Who said that? Kenneth Copeland. People have even argued about whether God is male and female. But the Bible says, but the Bible itself tells us that he's both. Stop right here. No, it doesn't. Not this one. You'll never read that in there. You will never ever read that God is both male and female in this Bible right here. You'll never read that. However, if you start reading the new NIVs that are coming out, it makes an allowance for that doctrine by neutralizing the gender of God. He goes on. He says, in the Hebrew language, stop right here. This is called private interpretation. No prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation, which means translation. And so what Copeland does is he goes, he doesn't even give you the word. He goes and says, now, in the original Hebrew, does that sound familiar to you? You've, you've sat in a church and the pastor said, now, in the original Greek, this is what this really means. That's a license that we don't have. And so Copeland says, oh, in the original Hebrew, in the original Hebrew, here's, here's what it really should have said in your Bible. He is setting himself up like the Pope who has authority even above the scriptures. In the Hebrew language, all words have gender. They're either male or female. But the Hebrew word Jehovah is both masculine and feminine. No, it's not. He's as much female as he is male, and he's as much male as he is female. Boy, these uh, false prophets being natural brute beasts just kind of takes on a whole new meaning, doesn't it? 
Look, we quoted these verses a while ago, Deuteronomy 22, 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination to the Lord thy God. And I have seen preachers, and they did it like as a joke, you know, they're jesting. Wearing women's makeup and a woman's dress in some little comedy skit. I don't, I don't go for that. I don't, there, there are not any pictures of me ever floating around on the internet in a dress. Okay? Deuteronomy 22, 9. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers seeds, diverse seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Thou shalt not wear a garment of divers sorts such as woolen and linen together. God was serious about this thing. And then we get into this whole transgendered movement. Transgenderism, everything now. And we're favoring, we're favoring transgender. There was, oh, oh, I can't get the image out of my mind. There was on Drudge Report last week, and I'm not even going to put the picture up. There was a picture on Drudge Report last week of a man, a man, who went to the airport dressed in a woman's bra and panties and nothing else. Went through security, boarded a plane, flew to the destination, got off, and nobody said a word. I would have said a word transgender movement, the transgender issue, fusing the line between male and female, or fusing them together, this, you, now you know what spirit is driving this. When we start accommodating, and the laws, the laws now that are being written, or being considered, or being jammed down our throat, have everything to do with the spirit of transgenderism, which we now know is Baphomet, if they can create a goat that is both male and female and they have no problem with it, we're, we're just around the corner, literally, from a transformation. Uh, the horns of Baphomet. I want you to see, a lot of this stuff that I'm pointing out to you is simple. If you just stop and think about it, you may say, well, I don't, you know, I look at this, I don't know what all this means. Um, and uh, Marilyn talks about, well, actually, uh, actually, our, get, let us get Fat Albert Pike here. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, here is Albert Pike, and he talks all about symbols in this book. I mean, symbols and symbols and symbols. And uh, every chapter has a symbol to it. It's a, a reference. So here's one that's a key. Oh, wow, think about that, Revelation 9. Um, and, they, and, and Pike will tell you in this book, um, all those th all those symbols we use in Freemasonry, to those of you in the Blue Lodge, uh, we told you what they meant. <laughs> we we were lying. We, we, it, that's not really what they meant. And a lot of Freemasons get mad when you question Freemasonry. They get mad because they say, "Nope, that's not how it is." Well, their Grand Master, the guy, and 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 anybody that says, "Well, we don't follow Albert Pike," really then dig his body up out of the uh, house of the Temple Lodge in Washington, D.C. and go put it somewhere else because according to the big boys in Washington, D.C., they still follow this guy and they revere him and he is one of the two pillars of Jacob and Boaz that is buried inside of the house of the Lodge Temple in Washington, D.C. But Albert Pike says all these symbols that we have, like the double-headed eagle and all that stuff, and we tell you that it means this, and we tell you square and compass is that the mason, that means the mason is to circumscribe his his conduct with some blah, 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 blah. Albert Pike says, we lied. We didn't tell you the truth. We actually misled you, and we did it on purpose, because the mysteries and the secrets that we know, we can't tell anybody unless you're one of us. Okay? God actually reveals all these things, and a lot of these things are just real simple. And I want you to think about horns. Horns always take on the DNA spiral shape. So think about that for a minute. And actually, what we're looking at here is very similar let me get my book out here. It's very, very, very similar. In fact, it really, literally means the same as this here. Here is the two lower horns, and here's the third horn in the middle. This is man's DNA as it is now, two strand. This is the addition of the third strand here. So look at this. And it has everything to do with the number three. For all that is in the world, <coughs> the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Did you count those? There's three. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not 
of the Father, but is of the world. And so the power, uh, you know, that you know, you think of a, a goat and and the power of a goat being in his horns. The power of the goat right now, or that spirit of Antichrist, um, with the two horns is not powerful enough. It needs that third horn to be all powerful and all encompassing. And those three horns represent the man of sin, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, literally encoded into man's DNA. The structure of those horns is similar to the idea of the union of opposites, male and female together. Okay, sons of God, daughters of men. See the opposites there, sons of God, up the heavenly realm, daughters of men. Okay, they're exactly opposites in every way. And yet they come together like, like uh, Osiris and Isis. And they come together and the result of their union together is the birth of a son. Ichabod. Ichabod comes to mind. The birth of a son. The Ichabod means the glorious departed. Ichabod, the birth of Ichabod had everything to do with pointing to a last day's time when literally the glory of God is going to be departed. Why? Because the God of this world now rules and man has made his choice. So we have the birth. We have the coeptus, the Anuit coeptus. He favors the birth. Novus Ordo Seclorum of a new world order. And that's what the third in the middle represents. It represents the birth and the coming of the man of sin, Horus, Apollo, all of these other things. It represents a new birth. You see it in the uh, right angle triangle. The idea, you'll see this in Masonic literature, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. In other words, the sum of the square of line A plus the sum of the square of line B equals the sum of the square of line C. See, I see I'm, I'm not a math genius. I hate this stuff. But I looked at that and I'm going, I get that. Because A squared equals Osiris. B squared equals Isis. And when you sum them together, they add up to the birth of Horus. You see that in the layout of Washington, D.C., the White House, Washington's Monument, the Capitol Building. It's very magical. It's called geomancy. It's called this idea that if we build it, they will come. Uh, in the Masonic Lodge, you have the junior warden, the senior warden, and there in the midst of the junior and the senior warden, you have an exalted throne where, listen to this now, the worshipful master sits. And you have to call him that. You can't call him, hey, Bob, hey, Frank. He, you can't. When you go in the lodge, you can't say... Hey, Tom, you can't do that. You must refer to him as the worshipful master. Think about it. Jesus himself is the one who used the words master when he said no man can serve two masters. Um, in Gothic Cathedral, see the two doors on one side and the other, male and female. They have fused together. And now you have the third door in the middle, and that represents the birth of a new world order. I've even seen this on a lot of churches. This is actually uh, a church. The, the Masonic Lodge is about two doors down from this place on the same block, same, same road, same street. Uh, the bottom parts of the unfinished pyramid represent two-strand DNA. The top part represents the completion of that structure. It's like the Tower of Babel. It's unfinished. The, the work is not done yet. Okay, um, It needs help. And one of these days it's going to get help. It's going to be the addition of the Antichrist in the last days. And then, right, oh, I like this one. Right, right, right here. Right on his forehead. Or this, maybe in this case it would be a five head. Um, we have the pentacle or the pentagram. Lockheed Martin uses that symbol. The, the Pentagon building. And Lockheed Martin, let's see, they work for the Pentagon. And their logo says, we never forget who we're working for. Oh, I get it. Because that pentagram is related to Isaiah chapter 14. This number 5. It, it also points to death too. In Genesis chapter 5, you have a repeated pattern of death. Adam is mentioned five times. And the fifth time he's mentioned, the Bible says he died. Seth, the same thing. The pattern is carried down through until you get to Enoch. He breaks the pattern. But then it picks up again until Noah. And the fifth time Noah's name is mentioned, the Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. 
And I like that. Noah got to live when everybody else died. This number five, the law. The five books of the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the Pentateuch is what it's called. And the law, the Bible, Paul referred to it as the law of sin and death. You see, if you try to live by the law, it'll kill you because there's a curse there. Christ removed the curse by being pierced. One, two, three, four at his feet, the fifth time in his side. I like this, but we have Satan's five point plan. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, the angelic realm. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, that's the church realm, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And number five, I will be like the most high. You see that image on the satanic Bible. Rock bands use that. I mean, everybody is using, and and listen now, listen, it will not surprise me to see the pentagram being used in the church at some point, very subtly. In fact, I think it already is. Look at this. And here's, and here's, let's get back to this idea of transformation. This pentagram represents the power of Lucifer being, being brought to the earth. Uh, the Pentagon thing on 9-11 where you had the symbol of the male airplane flying into the symbol of the female pentagram the fusion of the opposites giving birth to a new world order giving birth to the transformation of mankind notice the pattern because we started out with this earlier we started out with this idea of uh, transformation being when we are taken up into heaven Paul said that in 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a, number one, a shout. Number two, the voice of the archangel. Number three, the trump of God. Number four, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Number five, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. It is about transformation. Now, Manly Hall describes the pentagram this way. He says, the pentagram is the figure of the microcosm, the magical formula of man. It is the one rising out of the four. Let me stop right here. Let me explain to you what those four are. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, thiamine. That is the four base pairs of your DNA. And there is one who will rise out of the four. The human soul rising from the bondage of the animal nature. It is the true light, the star of the morning. It marks the location of five mysterious centers of force, the awakening of which is the supreme secret of white magic. You see here, this sort of looks like uh, Da Vinci's Vitruvian man, the transformed God man, uh, whose five points, the head rising up out of The four base pairs. Here are, and and basically that references man's DNA in his X chromosome. So when you see the symbol of the skull and bones, notice the bones crisscross pattern. That is man's four base pairs and his chromosomes, which look like crosses, and the skull rising out of that. Let's see, President Bush and President Bush and John Kerry and scores, hundreds of others belonging to a secret society called the Order of Skull and Bones? And they're Christians? I don't think so. But anyway, the skull is a symbol for the Antichrist. Jesus was crucified at the place of the skull, the cross being driven into the skull like the nail being driven into Sisera's head. The skull is an emblem of the Antichrist, the one rising out of the four. And you have the the five elements, earth, air, fire, water, and then spirit. And spirit is that fifth element that rises out of the four. And that's the basis for elemental magic. Magic, magic is sort of like the force of Star Wars, which you ought not play with. The force of Star Wars and el- elemental magic are exactly identical the same. Because witches say, oh, we're not, we're not, we're not using devils. That's so silly. We're using the powers that be in nature, earth, air, fire, and water. We're just using them to do good things. This is why Wicca is such an attraction, especially to young girls who want power. They want control. And they will use the elementals to bring about their magic. Look at this Dow Chemical advertisement talking about the human element. Um, 
We have the emblem of DNA on Baphomet. We've talked about this before and how all of these all of these groups, all of these businesses, all of these think tanks, all you'll hear in advertising talking about how it's in our DNA. Uh, the game is in us. It's in our DNA. Here's one uh, uh, from Bentley. Okay? Hard work is in our DNA. Time Magazine put out an article called The God Gene. Does our DNA compel us to seek a higher power? Believe it or not, some scientists say yes. They said there's something in our DNA that's going to come out. Diversity is in our DNA. Um, that deals with the idea of transhumanism, that we have our four base pairs. Something is going to be added or rise out of that that is going to take us to the next level. Okay, we've we've been see this is why evolution is so dangerous and it's so idiotic if you believe if you want to believe it. Even theistic evolution, don't believe that. It's not biblical, it's not right. Um, but evolution says that man started out way down here and he's been he's had all these paradigm shifts. You see, and watch for this. Because the the uh, the scientists who teach all this stuff about evolution and the evolution of man. One of the things that they're having a really, 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 really hard time doing is that any time they say, well, this, this here was a Neanderthal man and this here is Cro-Magnon man, what they don't have are the transitional species between this and this. So you know what they're going to say? And they're maybe already saying it now. They're going to say that evolution is brought about by a dramatic, cataclysmic event that makes the DNA change suddenly rather than progressively. That's a setup for the paradigm shift. Uh, Humanity Plus, other terms like this, Ray Kurzweil coming out and talking about how that we are going to be immortal in the next, let's say the next 30 to 40 years. Mankind is going to be a god. It's exactly what Lucifer promised in the Garden of Eden. Here we go. New movie coming out. You're always going to see this stuff in the movies. Okay, and actually, Marilyn Ferguson actually wrote about that. She said, "We yeah, we've got film producers. They're putting the putting all these secrets in there." Um, Planet of the Apes, the new one. Okay, it's a sequel to the original, which was a remake of the old one. Um, but the, I saw the trailer, the theatrical trailer to Planet of the Apes. And I'm watching this and I'm going, okay, I get this. This is not about apes becoming human. This is about humans becoming gods by manipulation in man's DNA. And during the course of the theatrical trailer, what you see is this phrase, revolution, or excuse me, evolution equals revolution. A change is coming. Revolution and evolution. There is no evolution without a revolution. And this is, I mean, you see this in the church. Here's a book called Decoding the Church, Mapping the DNA of Christ's Body. Uh, The D6, by the way, D6 Conference. This is something that the Free Will Baptists through Randall House Publications are putting on every year. Um, Instead of going with the Bible, they're going with all the New Age concepts. D and 6. The letter D is the number 4. 46. The 46 conference coming up last year said, how do I change the DNA of our church? You know how to change the DNA of your church? Quit using this Bible and start using all the other ones. Then you change the because the Bible is the DNA of the church people. Okay. It's all about DNA transformation. It's about, remember, I mentioned this word a while ago, the word confusion. Con means with. Fusion means melded together. It's about fusion. The symbol of Baphomet holding his hand up and hand down as above, so below. The male and the female uh, together in the same body. The man and the beast. It's about fusion. If you look at the symbols, look at what's going on in the world. Everything is about fusion. Uh, Advertisements, car names, software, drinks. They're trying to plant, even Glenn Beck is in on the scene. Glenn Beck, the Mormon, who believes that through the union of the male and the female that the two people become gods. His magazine, Fusion, he's about the transformation and the change of America. Building building America upon the foundation 
of not necessarily the Mormon church, even though that's what he is, but the doctrine that says man is going to become God's through sacred marriage, the fusion of the husband and wife uh, together. You even have all these fusion centers all over the country where they're taking the different departments that are keeping their eye on everything that you're doing and fusing all the information together. We have this, we have infusion church, fusion church, better to notice the symbol of fusion church. There it is right there. Okay. Uh, fusion this, fusion that, fusion elements. What is your element? Building upon the elemental magic, fusion magazine. It's the idea of that thesis versus antithesis. In other words, you have thesis, which is one concept, and antithesis, which is the exact opposite concept. And they're fused together to form what's called synthesis. The new synthetic man, the synthetic doctrines going through the church, synthetic ideas. It's all about fusion, and it starts by being symbolized by a goat that is a synthetic goat producing synthetic milk to feed people so that we become synthetic ourselves. The fusion of male and female together. The symbols, the symbols are all there. Notice the fusion that me and you fuse together will lead us to God. Um, the fusion of opposites in our country. The Tea Party movement, or the or the uh, the, the the conservatives, or the uh, you know people like that, clashing against the Marxists and the liberals in this country. There needs to be a catalyst, and there's going to be one of these days. A catalyst, something that's going to spark and ignite all of this stuff, and the two opposites are going to clash, and there's going to be a fusion in this country, a paradigm shift led about by a president who ran on the promise of transformation. Um, again, back to this D6 conference. You'll see in the church realm everything talking about a shift, a shift. Notice the hand gestures of Baphomet. Salve and coagulate. I've dealt with this before. Salve means to dissolve. Coagula means to coagulate or rebuild it. I want you to notice the fingers on his right hand pointing up. You have two fingers pointed down and three fingers, fingers pointed up. That is the number 23. Notice on the opposite hand pointing down, you have two fingers pointing up and three fingers pointed down. That is still the number 23, which is 46. It's the number of chromosomes that, where our DNA is stored. It's all about man's DNA. But the fusion of these two things together and how is it going to work? You have to dissolve first. So we have a financial crisis. We have a health care crisis. We have buildings falling down. We have the environment that is going to collapse. The sky is falling right over us right now. We're all going to die in 30 years. Major catastrophes, earthquakes in diverse places. Tsunamis, natural disasters, tornadoes, God speaking through the whirlwind people. All these cataclysmic events are meant to dissolve so that new things can rise up in their place. And how is it done in the church realm? It starts out with dissolving the word of God by saying, Yea, hath God said. This goes back a hundred or year so hundred years or so. Back inside the church realm, when you had Westcott and Hort, who wanted to introduce a brand new Bible based upon corrupt seed, corrupted manuscripts. Thus bringing in the doctrines that floated through all the Bible colleges and seminaries. And now it's in the pulpits, and now it's in the minds of the church member who says, well, the Bible really doesn't say that. Not in the originals, no. Okay, it doesn't really say that. Yea, hath God said. What that has done is that has dissolved the faith of people who should have believed the Bible. And when you dissolve it, you've got to coagulate it. You've got to rebuild it. Frank Viola and George Barna wrote two books. The first book was called Pagan Christianity. Pagan Christianity, by their own admittance, was an attempt to tell the church member that all the things that we're doing in a church, like a pastor speaking behind a pulpit and take up an offering and you know folding our hands to prayer and all this, this telling you that everything that we're doing in our church services is all pagan. Why are you doing this stuff? You're worshiping false gods. And they admitted that that was an attempt to dissolve the sacred structures of the church worship. They were trying to tear it down, dissolve it, solve it. 
then you have to coagulate something in it. You have the rising of the phoenix, the phoenix rising up out of the dissolved remains, the ashes of what it used to be, resurrection, transformation, coagula, building something in its place. So Lucifer says, the serpent says, yea, hath God said. He just dissolved the word of God. Now he's going to re-coagulate by saying, ye shall not surely die. Ye shall be as gods. You see how it works? Salve coagula. The goy. The goat who is male and female. A new one rising up in its place. New world order to save the earth. Reimagining church. Here's the book that they wrote. Once they've dissolved the old structures of church worship, now they're going to reimagine what the church is going to look like. Imagination. How did they build the Tower of Babel? They imagined it. Go read that. God said, I have to put a stop to this because everything that they now imagine to do, they'll do. That's how the Tower of Babel was. That's how they designed it. They reimagined something. And now we're reimagining the church. Everything in the church now is about imagining, dreaming, conceptualizing, fantasizing. Rebuilding the church, redoing it once it's been dissolved. It's the same way with the political structures, the financial structures, the healthcare structure. Every structure in this world is about to be dissolved, maybe soon. And they have to do that so they can put a new one in its place. You have to bring down the two towers, Jacob and Boaz, 9-11. You have to dissolve. And boy, they were. They were dissolved. Literally. And if you believe the story... Um, Osama bin Laden was caught on tape saying he never thought that it would be that bad. Maybe it was. Maybe he was right. Maybe, maybe he never thought that. But the God of transformation did. And so the old ones were dissolved and a new one now is rising up in its place. See how it works? The God of transformation. Let's go back to Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you sit, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Sacrifice yourself, and then be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The word translation comes into effect here. Colossians chapter 1, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us, to, made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the powers of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. That word translation, we're going to see it. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And here it is, Hebrews 11 verse 5. Remember that number 5? By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before uh, for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him I believe in a transformation I believe that one of these days the trump is going to sound the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. I believe in that. But it's going to be done the old way, according to the old paths. Be careful and mark them who are all about change. And stop, stop thinking about this. Why can't we just let goats be goats? Why can't we let he goats be he goats and nanny goats be nanny goats? Why can't we let lambs be lambs? Why can't we let mice be mice? Why can't we let this bacteria or virus be this bacteria or virus? Why does it have to be changed? Why can't we just let humans be humans and follow Christ? No, we have to change everything. Psalm 102 verse 26, They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them. And they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. The Bible warns us about those who are always going about to change everything. Let God do the changing in your life. Let Him do it. 
This symbol of the goy, the male and the female goat, what it does is it visualizes in the heart of mankind that the spirit of Baphomet is already active, already working, and the plan to transform mankind is proceeding as planned. Your prayer and my prayer is that God will allow us, just as the ark did, to rise up above all of us. This is Pastor Mike. God bless you, and I will see you the next time.